Not really. Hey, welcome to <laughs> the uh, I am pulling up funny pictures to send to goalie. Uh, he doesn't, I guess he hears me now. I shouldn't have said that, but I'm supposed to be sending him something. We have a oh cool uh, lineup for the... What? 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 what no, I, mean? I just saw... Uh, Cool I'm not gonna. To I'm not gonna point it out. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm what? Sorry. What happened? What? Okay, happened? we have. We're on the front page. I just went to we Twitch have, and we're on the front page already. We have 420 viewers. <laughs> That's for Hey! Well. <laughs> I looked. I was like, it oh, shows okay. over. Success. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cut the stream off. We just mute. We're done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let me find this uh, thing that this guy named Landon sent me. <laughs> So prepared as always. All right. So if you guys, Landon, can you take over the intro? Because this, my computer. Yes. I will take over the intro. So welcome to the Sticks Live, guys. Presented by Xbox. Not really. We're not actually presented by Xbox. That'd be cool, though, if we were joined today by. Oh, that'd be be the day. That'd be the day. Can you imagine? Uh, just streamed on the Xbox dashboard. Presented by Xbox. Uh, no, but we're presented. No, oh, I just said it again. Here with Fox, Rondez Fox, and Tommy. How are you guys doing today? Starting with Tommy. How are you doing? I'm good, pal. I'm, you know, I'm not going to complain because I've already been told off because I'm not allowed to. I'm not allowed to complain, but I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> Fox, how are you doing, uh, uh, Bud? Are you a little bit stressed? Uh, yeah, it's been a pretty stressful day. I'm um, dealing with passport issues. I'm supposed to be casting UGC Niagara this weekend, and um, a couple post office errors are kind of setting me back, and so I had to pay like extra money to get the process sped up even further. You know, I had to social engineer my way through. No, I'm kidding. I just I paid for like expedited <laughs> shipping and, and everything like that. And um, is there something you're not telling crushed, us? Crushed some skulls and hit up my mob boss and things like that. But hopefully, it should still be here by Thursday, and, and I'm all right. Mm. Well, we'll be. I'll be keeping you in my prayers for sure. You need. You definitely need to, to have that done. But um, so yeah, we're gonna kind of give our intros. Uh, or you kind of give like you have like thirty seconds, kind of in a way. Talk about yourself, your activities in the community, and whatnot. And I want you guys to answer this question. You probably should have got this before because it's kind of a long question. Um, but we're just gonna do, roll with it anyway. Just do three. Just do three map rotation. Three. Well, do like uh, would, hard point. Do, uh, uh, hard point. S and D, uh, S and D, and CTF or something. Okay, so from any Call of Duty, what would your dream map rotation be? So from any Call of Duty maps, whatever. So like your favorite S and D, your favorite CTF, and your favorite Hardpoint. What maps would be in like what place? So like, does that make sense? So like for me, it would be like Hardpoint slums. CTF would be what, and then you know S and D. I'm gonna start off with Tommy. I hope I don't know if he has these ready. Or should I start? I can start if needed. Uh, I can start if you want. Um, All right. I'm going to be kind of biased um, and favoritize Black Ops 2 because it just was so good for map rotations and the maps that are in the game. For me, Hardpoint, I'd probably give to Slums. Um, s and I'd probably say Meltdown. And then CTF, going to go with Standoff. That's, that's, that's very accurate, I would say, at least to my <laughs> list. Uh, I go to Fox, and then after that I go to Kingdom. So All right, Hardpoint is going to be Raid. S and D is going to be overgrown from Cod Four. Ooh. Uh, CTF is very easily going to be raid again, or I guess you know I'm not going to choose the same map twice. I think we can all agree raid is perfect, but CTF, I'll go with slums. And uh, you, you want you have to go through it again for another hard point in S and D because that's what it says here. But you, you can if you want to, but you can only choose oh. since it was like so late. You can only do three if you want, but you can do whatever you want to. It's just, all right, a second hard point. I'm going to go with. Oh man, I'm trying to think of the, the uh, and not Yemen, the other hardpoint map that was in Black Ops Two. You know, I'll go with Detroit. I like Detroit hardpoint a lot. I'll go with that. And then for S and D, I'm gonna go with Warhawk from Ghosts. Very, very valid, very valid picks. Uh, no wait, Express. Never mind. Oh, Express. <laughs> that was. I was gonna say that. You can't yeah, change your pick. A... Yeah, I can. I just did. <laughs> I want to change mine then. No, nah, dude. We want to change yours too. <laughs> Ten seconds. No, no, really. I'm, 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 oh. I'm playing around. <laughs> just, I'm playing just around. <laughs> oh, okay, okay. I see this is going. <laughs> Mister, Mister Anthony. Um, for hardpoint, I'm gonna say slums. For search and destroy, Nuketown. Uh, 
<laughs> Are you kidding? <laughs> no, no I can't trust. I'm sorry. No. Um, for oh my gosh, I could say Terrace. Oh um, please. <laughs> What about Wasteland? Wasteland. 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 Why don't we just throw it all? Oh, we just play Stonehaven. Yeah, <laughs> like, just add yeah. Rust. Rust CTF. <laughs> Rust. Rust everything. That'd be the best game. No. Yeah. Oh. I'm, looking at a, I'm looking at a website, and I'm going to read these off, and you guys can tell me if you agree. So these are the worst maps in Call of Duty history, according to Gfinity News. Uh, number 10 is Terrace. Number 9 is Aftermath from Black Ops 2. Number 8 is it. Asylum from World at War. Uh, number seven is Biolab from Advanced Warfare. <laughs> what? No, come on, not for hard. Agree with that. <laughs> what? Number not six is hard. Downturn, and I agree. I hated that map in Modern Warfare Three. It was the worst. That had like the underground. Ah, oh, hated that yeah. map. Uh, number five is Outpost from Modern Warfare Three as well. I hated that map too. Except I got some good streaks on it. That map was a, a good map for streaks. Number four is Wasteland, but if you were a sniper, you probably liked it. Number Ooh. or number that was number five. Number. They have two number fours, weirdos. Number three is Carrier from Black Ops 2. Number two <laughs> is Strike Zone from Ghost. That's interesting. And the number one worst map in Call of Duty history is Stonehaven from Call of Duty. Yes! <laughs> yes! That map was I knew so it! Bad. <laughs> Come on! Like, we all job. saw that coming. We all saw that Rust coming. Rust was actually the best map. Uh, on the other list where they had the best maps in Call of Duty history, Rust was on that. Was number one. Can we go through that Rust one, please? Fun. Could you please pull that list up? Oh I'm actually gosh. really interested to see that. Alright, well, let me finish my turn, and then while Landon's going, I'll pull it back up. So, uh, I would say, uh, what did I say? Slums for Hardpoint, uh, for Search. I'm gonna probably cheat and say Meltdown as well, like Tommy, uh, and I'm gonna say, I'm gonna have the exact same list. I'm gonna say Standoff because Optic <gasps> Van was the greatest CTS oh. moment. Colby Col Impact. Colby Impact. Where it went Stand to off the... CTF. Stand off CTF was dope. Landon, you're up. Oh, sorry. Okay, so I, I kind of had like this ahead of time. Like I had this list obviously before anyone else because I made it. But um, <laughs> for me, for hard point, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna do all five uh, maps in rotation. I'm gonna start off with slums. Just all of the amazing games that we saw in slums is definitely why I chose that one to start us off with. Uh, yeah. thinking of one in mind was like when Skump went off against some team. I can't remember who it was. He got like a nine kill streak and whatnot. That was a really good map. Um, for SD, I would go to Sovereign. I thought Sovereign was amazing in Ghosts personally. That was like my favorite map to watch uh, SD on. Speaking of Sovereign, I remember X Games Proofy getting the uh, the ace, ace along with like that three piece. That was amazing. Um, yeah. CTF Standoff. I thought Standoff to me was the most amazing CTF map. Uh, speaking of like impact versus complexity, where there was like so such crazy series between them, uh, to me that was like my favorite map for for CTF ever. Um, going back to hard point, it wasn't really a hard point map, but I would have loved to see Freight played on it. I just loved Freight; it was like my favorite Ghost map, and I just really liked it. Uh, for Dom, it was really entertaining for me, so I would just add that in there. Um, for Meltdown, it was just or for S and D, the last map would be Meltdown. Just call uh, the Black Ops Two COD Champs final. Really good final. Really enjoyed it. So that would, that would be my map rotations, my dream map rotations. All right. So if I'm going to read the top ten best. Now, this is the way, this site, and you guys tell me agree or disagree. They have number ten is Mission from Modern Warfare 3. And you guys can tell me if you don't remember any of these missions or any of these maps. Mission was the one with the bridge, and then it had the ramp going down, and in the middle was the truck, and the B flag was pure aids like no, all you did I've, was chuck aids out of spawn oh yeah yeah, yeah yeah like like i've repressed hills. all of my blo all of my modern warfare 3 memories like i've just tried <laughs> to erase it the same with ghosts i unfortunately i still remember everything about ghosts but yeah well it was recent me and goalie actually when we did kingdom eights we tried them on modern warfare 3 and we 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 figured out a a version of domination that would work for eights like we shrunk down the timeline and and uh mission was one of the maps we played actually it was it was pretty cool so i don't even remember this map it's called i don't even know how to say it t-o-u-j-a-n-e from call of duty 2 2 hane 2 jane i don't even <laughs> oh i started playing past. cod 3 i'm useless yeah I, I played big red one but i have no idea what that is I so what about it. do you remember this one landon making day <laughs> that was the yeah. name of a map yeah, yeah. making yeah. night they like the night version of it Yes. From World at War. Yeah, making yeah. day. Mm -hmm. uh, l what? Launch from Black Ops 1? That was The one that had the... the this Google. one, the spaceship yeah. or the, the thing top 10 
in Call of Duty history? Wait, these mock. are the best? It's, you can tell us this is yeah, made Yeah, these by are the best. <laughs> Huh. Well, it's made, from, it's made by Gfinity. You know, the EU has some issue with selecting top tens. Oh, come on now. <laughs> come on now. Hold back. Hold back. <laughs> All right, so Crash from COD 4. Okay. That's now we're map. getting somewhere. Crash is a good map. <laughs> Nuketown from Black Ops 1. That was a good map. Standoff. Wait a minute. I'm getting scared. There's a couple of maps that I'm seeing are not going to be on here. And I'm we have scared. one single COD 4 map in there right now. Like, we're already down to the top three. I think the list is being a bit biased. Yes, I can link the list. Goalie wants me to link the list. Hold up. All right. So, Standoff from Black Ops 2. Number three. What? <clears throat> Retreat from Advanced Warfare. What? The third <laughs> best map in Call of Duty history. Who wrote this list? <laughs> Retreat is up. <laughs> this is for this is, this is. Wait, let me Tommy, see. Tommy, what's wrong wrote. with you guys? <laughs> <laughs> Aren't you like the ambassador of all of Europe or something? <laughs> I'm going. I'm, I'm going. I'm walking out the I door. The I'm sorry. Whoever wrote queen. this list is not from the EU. They're from somewhere else. They're not... I blame the Queen. I really do. <laughs> Although, okay, wait, wait. Let's see what they. Wait, wait. Let's see what they say. Okay. <laughs> Although Advanced Warfare has been released for a few months, Retreat has already grown to become one of my... So somebody wrote this. One of my personal oh all-time favorite God. maps. Along with the classic three-lane structure, Retreat boats, boasts... He spelled wrong. A plethora of ledges and rooftops for players to fully utilize the new EXO mechanics implemented by... Sl so this is someone that's trying to use all of the different Call of Duties, obviously. Because... Uh, yeah, it makes more sense. Wouldn't you put, sol like, wouldn't you put Solar over this map on, that, on this game? On AW, would you guys yeah, put Solar wait, over is Retreat? Solar on this list? I'm no, but I'm just saying, oh. when, if you were going to put an AW map and you had to choose between Retreat and Solar, wouldn't you put Solar? Solar, like, easily. oh yeah. I'm just thinking Solar is a better map in my opinion. That, that's weird. All right, number two, Overgrown from COD Four. That was a good map. That was definitely I, a good I, map. I, I like cool. it, but not more than Standoff. You know? Yeah. A lot of people learned their. Okay, so here's my concern. We have not heard Raid, right? Raid has not been mentioned. And what other Black Ops 2 maps did we... We haven't heard Raid or Slums. And there's one how, left. How it's neither know? one of those maps. I liked oh. Freight. I don't know why. I like Freight, to be honest with you. I there's going to be a Ghost, but, but they haven't picked okay, a Ghost map but yet. But how okay? could Raid not make it in the top oh, no, 10 that's, maps of all time? That's retarded. I don't know. So wait, is Slams number possible? one? No, number one is Rust from Modern Warfare 2. What? Oh, this is totally what? ridiculous. <laughs> Who made the list? This is like, totally ridiculous. Standoff was number four. Standoff was number four. This but is a no British way. sniper. And no oh. Clickbait. I'm, I'm uninterested now. <laughs> <laughs> I'm done. I'm done, Rage, dude. Rage is saying that Arcaden domination was <laughs> the best comp competitive map ever. <laughs> no. Oh, I'm Rage. done. I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> All right, so that, that was definitely in. Um, wow, that was interesting. Like, Landon, you went cool. right. Took your turn. Yeah, I went. Yeah. yeah. Rust, okay, look. Let me say this. Because of the playability and the fun of Rust, it's just like Nuketown. I would put it in my top ten, for but yeah. I would not put it number one. And because I'm, you know, I'm a Black Ops two head. I just love. There's games. There, Standoff to me is one of the most playable maps. It you could play every game mode on that one map, and it all played extremely well, in my opinion. Hardpoint played oh, no, well, right. CTF played well, and Search played well on that map. We've heard in your mind, I can think of exciting games that I've seen in every game type. And when that came up, when Standoff came up, and I was playing League Play, I pretty much threw a party. I got excited. So I'm curious why Freefall isn't there. You guys remember Freefall, the DLC map? Dude, I couldn't even <laughs> see anything on that map. That map was uh, so no. stressful map, to play on. I swear you just got spawn map. trapped. It was just oh, bad. Yeah. That was a, it was such it was such a piece of crap. It, there's probably a lot of detrimental lists like this that exist. That we, haven't seen. <laughs> <laughs> we found one of them. Shipment. In the oh my god, I forgot about shipment. We didn't hear anybody mention vacant. We didn't hear anybody mention wet work from COD Four. Yeah. We didn't hear oh Ray, jungle. Which yeah. is the biggest jungle? thing. Jungle. jungle for Black Ops One was great. Dude, we didn't hear it. uh what is that big summit? I guess that was the remake in Black Ops Two. Uh, was the oh, yeah. Summit wasn't Up on this West. list. Oh my gosh. Okay, I'm tweeting man. it out. I don't care. Firing range. They need to fire whoever wrote that. Firing range, song. you're right, from Black Ops 1. That's I nuts. Love that. Someone's just put in the chat favela. Dome, 
No, no, no. What was the map called from uh, World at War? The small one from World at War. Was that uh, Asylum? Gfinity doesn't like unfollow me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, whoops. Favela. Look, someone in chat just said Favela. Yeah, Favela that was said. cool, but it wasn't like, it wouldn't be like my favorite. Yeah, it's, just, it's quite a big map. Compared to all the stuff that we have on here, though, I'm saying, like, yeah, yeah. oh yeah, yeah, well, oh yeah, we we could we could literally disagree with half the stuff on this side hill. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm I'm gonna put it out there. I'm <laughs> sorry, I'm it sorry, Gfinity like, employee, <laughs> just just walk out your job. I'm sorry. There's a place for you somewhere. It's just not. Try. There. It was good effort. I'm sure he's getting lots of clicks from it. Like, <laughs> well, yeah, I'm sure he is now. I'm about to tweet it out. So there's. We're we're sending them some some oh, attention. I guess. Someone I just know. subscribed. Yeah. Who was it? Wis Wisp. Four months in a row. Throw some little hitch faces in the chat for a little wispy. All right. So <laughs> people are still going with maps. People are saying like high rise and dome. So <gasps> Hi, dude, high rise. High rise. Yeah. How did we not say uh, that? that? Was fun, but I don't know. That's I just was fantastic. Just, but, but landing, landing, but landing. Compare it to what you just heard. No, no, no. I agree with that. I'm just saying, if, if, if there was a logical list out there, it wouldn't be in my top ten. <laughs> this is yeah. not a logical list by any means. <laughs> no, not at all. No, this list is awkward. <laughs> all right. So I guess they tried to do multiple um, from multiple games. I, I don't know. That was just Hard Hat was a good map, too. I actually liked that. I actually did like Hard Hat. I did good on that map a lot. Um because of that midsection where you could just you could throw nades from almost anywhere and kill people. All right, yeah. so there was a 10K yesterday. Now, here's what I want to ask. Who watched it? And how much did it? you watch? I watched the I Lil. Be honest. <laughs> MLG isn't watching. They're, they're not going to revoke your channel. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just I, I didn't get to watch a lot of the early gameplays, except for like ones that I really wanted to tune into because I was doing schoolwork. But um, as soon as I was finished... I sat and watched pretty much like two different streams. I had one up on my laptop and one up on my Xbox, and I was trying to watch different games at once. So I was really trying to follow Envious, Elevate, and um, uh, Optic a lot of the way. Yeah. So, Landon, how much of it did you watch? Um, I watched a little bit of the. I'm not gonna lie. I've been watching a lot of NBA playoffs. I really enjoy oh, hey, um, Traitor. Go. Traitor. Like, what? <laughs> Cavalier. I don't know what I'm saying. That I don't even know really what that is. That's basketball, I think. Um, <laughs> That's football. I ain't got a clue. NBA is football. NFL. Is not, oh, okay, it's not handy. Oh, uh, my bad. Uh, no, but, no, but I, I watched. I watched a little bit of it. No I idea. Not got a clue. <laughs> um, <laughs> Tommy, did you watch any of the? <laughs> I'm. I really want to just mute my mic right now. <laughs> um, I watched a fair bit. Um. I watched TCM quite a lot of the way because obviously they got to the semis, I want to say. Um, so I was trying to watch them when they were on the eSports um, report or whatever. Um, but yeah, I, I only watched it a little bit, really. <laughs> All right, I'm focused, I promise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm sorry. Who's what? What did I, I can't see what. Uh... Graphic looks. Oh, okay. So I can't. It's just that. how they so, advertise uh, one of the matches. That's so dope. The way it looks like that looks great. That's great. That's a really good tweet. That's all. <laughs> I was really I, impressed. Uh, uh, <laughs> no, they, their their production is T one. I watched. Um, I would say. I watched maybe two matches, and I got to see TK crumble. Uh, I love TK. Love Sharp. Um, Oh, that is a cool graphic. I just saw it on stream. Uh, yeah. I was able, but I was able to watch when TK lost to TCM. They were up 2-0, and TCM turned it around, won two maps in a row. And when they won the second map, which was Retreat, oh, one of the best maps ever, according <laughs> to the list we just read. Uh, they played Retreat CTF, and uh, Parasite went bananas like they lost i think it was 3-1 and parasite just i he, no, he just went off uh they were 2-0 yeah. and then they choked Ooh. the lead tk was 2-0 in the series and they choked the lead and then parasite had a temper tantrum yeah and then by the, when they got to retreat ctf he was like he it looked like he was already done and he was demoralized he was yelling at the team uh gunjar was like well, i didn't do that and blah, blah and they were miscommunicating and then when they went into the search uh they got 
they missed some key opportunities. There was a time when Nameless was like over the bomb, and then he, you know, Parasite was like, just crouch, just hide, and he didn't hide. He challenged, he killed one guy, and then died, and then Parasite yelled, and it was, it was there. And then Nameless cut off his stream before the match even ended. Once it was clear that it was over, he just cut his stream off. Uh, everybody on TK cut their streams off, and uh, it was all over Twitter. Um, people were saying how it's funny because they live in the same house right now. Like, <laughs> you know, Parasite, Parasite and Nameless are sitting next to each other and Parasite screaming and yelling. And so uh, it was it was weird. But the question I kind of have for you guys is, like, do you think – is there something that can be done? Like, what, what – I know we've all talked about it, CSGO, all this other stuff that's happening. But for some reason, you know, of course when you do a 10K in your MLG, you do it for viewership. You know, you don't offer more pro points just because. You're just like, hey, let's just give some pro points out. We want Optic <laughs> to get a million. Or let's just give out some pro points. Uh, and so they're giving out more pro points so that there can be more uh, – so that there can be more viewers and that viewership can increase. And I watched Twitter. Nobody was reporting on it. Nobody was saying what was happening in these matches. Of course, <clears throat> people that watch – streams were watching streams because that's what they do but it didn't seem like there was an increase from a 5k or a 2k or league matches it didn't seem like there was any increase whatsoever and that there wasn't any bump in in viewership and is there anything you guys think that can be done to to actually increase viewership on major league on mlg.tv when it comes to these types of uh events because a lot of the you know all the extra money they're giving out this year like they're really hoping for stream revenue. That's got to that continues to support them is the stream revenue. And so, uh, I just wanted to kind of get any of you guys' feedback that you might have on how they can increase uh, viewership. Personally, uh, I actually had talked about this to Kingdom before the stream had started, and I was, I was kind of just like talking, like you know, just randomly, like whatever I think of things. But um, this is just an idea that I had thought of. <clears throat> I don't know if they would ever consider doing it. Um, but to me, I would try to treat each game. Or, you know, each time they have a tournament or even a league match, this could really work for league matches as well, is to treat each game like not just as the 10K, like have a separate stream for each game. Like uh, for me in mind, I was actually watching an NBA game and I was thinking of this uh, at the time. I was like, you know what? Every they have a separate channel for every NBA game. They're not switching back and forth during, you know, certain things, you know, going back from stream to stream. And it gets kind of confusing. I would have certain streams with the titles as different things. So it's like. You know, two casters are casting on um, stream A for Optic versus TK. Stream B is Fox and Courage casting, you know, TCM. Like, you know, just randomly, you know, different games and whatnot, but have them separate so people can watch these games and rather than just have one stream or watch each player's perspective. I just think it'd be a lot better and a lot easier and kind of focus on one game rather than going, you know, from different match to different match. That makes sense. Fox, do you have any opinion? Uh, on increasing increasing viewership for online tournaments? Or just for MLG TV in general? What was your, what for, was your question? For on, yeah, for online tournaments. For, for, for Call of Duty, for competitive Call of Duty. When tournaments like this are going on, um, what can we do to increase viewership? Personally, I think that um, if Activision is going to, you know, force us into this corner to where things can only be put onto MLG TV, that they should invest some of their... Uh, effortless marketing into MLG TV linking directly to it because I mean if they're not going to let us go on Twitch and we only have MLG TV why are we why is it that only MLG is marketing itself why why is it that you know the Call of Duty Twitter isn't also marketing MLG TV tweeting things out like hey they're playing for 10,000 pro points come look you know I want to see some reddit posts stuff like that but we're really only seeing it come from MLG and the pro players so no one that like just it's it's hard because people that aren't already a fan of Call of Duty aren't going to tune tune in, you know, unless it's like a big production value or high production value event. I think that we should see yeah. more interaction from Activision and the Call of Duty Twitters. So Goalie is saying in the Skype chat that league matches should be more important. And Goalie, okay. if you want to just turn your mic on and talk, go ahead. Otherwise, okay, yeah, uh, I, I'll. Well, I'll what's that? <laughs> Where is that? Where is this voice coming from? It's a go. (laughs) Okay, but yeah, because I this is something I'm recording uh, here. This is something that I need to talk about because (laughs) as part of my job, I am sitting uh, down for four days or for four hours a day, four to five days a week covering these league matches. So this is kind of important to me. Um, But 
there needs to be less of a focus on these online tournaments and they have to make the league matches more important in my opinion like we can still have the online tournaments we can still have a 2k and we can still have a 5k every weekend but uh i think they need to put more of an emphasis on every single league match and maybe we have two esr streams <laughs> oh my god the chat i love you guys um <laughs> <laughs> but uh, but maybe have two ASR streams. We have two sets of casters, and instead of doing four matches at a time, you have just two matches at a time. Maybe a maximum of four matches a night, and uh, we just we have less just spam of content. Because the problem with the league right now is there's eight matches every single night. Last week I covered forty league matches. That's an issue. In my opinion, there should only be it half is. of those. It's It doesn't make any sense because they're just spamming content. And I understand that they're just trying to get... They're just trying to push as much content as they can. But let's uh, create less content and let's have it better and higher quality, in my opinion. So would that mean less league matches or yeah. just it would so well, we, would we have we have less league matches we drop it down to like 22 matches we'll say per team or something or we just extend the season mm-hmm. that's fine i was just curious what you do, but... so you know you know what's rough about that is that like people are already saying we should expand the league into more teams that mm-hmm. just means more league matches how is that going to be handled that's going to be I, crazy i i agree well uh so let's say we add four we add four more spots for war and we have 16 teams in the league let's do a maximum of 22 matches per each team so you only play each other team twice or you each you only play a team twice yeah, mm-hmm. and then oh, each I... match is much more important against the other team because, like, if you lose to Envy two times, you lose the head-to-head, and that is an extremely important head-to-head match that Envy has over you. All right. I think Goalie's a smart guy. Um, Goalie, do yeah. you like do COD stuff or something? Um, like... <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I kind of run a little database on the internet called cod.esportspedia.com. Uh, Who? So... The what? <laughs> no, you're a content blog? writer for them, just to point that out. But, uh... <laughs> Ooh, am I? <laughs> yeah. Am I really? But, Goalie's uh... also less in his own workload. He's yeah. Oh, yeah, 100%. It doesn't look... Uh, um, when Season 2 started, Season 2 was when Codpedia first started to become a thing, and we first started covering league matches. This is Season 2 of Ghosts, by the way. There were yeah. nine matches a night, and there were three sets. So you you covered, there were three matches going at a time, and it took forever. It would, be, it would end up being like six hours some nights, which was just crazy. But at least there were only three matches going on at a time. Yeah. And I it agree. was, I mean, yeah, like yeah. the the quality wasn't there back then because I don't even think the league matches were even casted back then, or maybe one one match a night was casted. Besides UGC, uh, Gandhi, and Maven were casting all the EG matches. Um, but I think we need to have less content at a higher quality, and that will push the league further. And we we just have we have to find a way to make the league matches more important because it doesn't make sense that you're a pro team, you're playing in the league every day of every week why the heck do you need to play in online tournaments every weekend and spend twenty dollars per player just to be just to stay as according to the pro point standings a pro player because optic could be in the pro league every single week they can do all their league matches but if they didn't play a single online tournament a single 2k a single 5k a single 10k (laughs) they wouldn't be in terms pro players because they don't play in the online tournaments every weekend yeah, I think I understand it, what you're saying by decreasing the saturation and like the oversaturation of all this content. Yeah. Uh, something similar that's happening is I know SourceFed, they're, they have this very popular series, or SourceFed Nerd has this very popular series called Table Talk, where they do it Monday through, thir- uh, Monday through Fridays, right? And recently, just so that they don't have, like, just so that the content doesn't get stale and so that people don't just get bored of it because it's there all the time, they've only, they're only doing it on Mondays, Tuesdays, and Wednesdays now. Mm-hmm. And then they, like, they've, put increased effort into like getting guests out there for those things and having specific topics or specific things going. It's, it's just more unique and much more, much higher production value in the terms of like just the amount of effort that goes into it. Yeah. So I do understand no, what you're saying. Yeah. It's, it's a, um, the, the challenge is goalie and is that, yeah, it is a revenue decision. It's a money decision. They're a business, you know, they're going to make a business decision. And the, the challenge is bigger, I think, in my opinion, than just that, uh, there's still a big, huge gap in how we treat our players and how we treat the players in the Call of Duty community. And when you think about, like, 
eventually it'd be nice and uh, people are going to hate me for saying this but eventually it'd be nice if there were things like salary caps like um trade deadlines that were actually realistic and stopped all the craziness now there's a lot of good teams that have been created from the recent trades and we're going to talk about them in a minute but uh at the same time it is very hard for some of these players to make this a career to do to do it as something that's that's livable where you can become a fan part of what makes the nba the mlb the nhl part of what makes those popular is that you see players stay in the league for like 10 plus years and they ride a wave. And even if they switch teams, you know, like Carmelo Anthony, you know, even if you switch teams, you still are a very popular player. Your Jersey still sells a lot. You know, LeBron has always, ever since he kind of took over that from, from Kobe, as far as Jersey sales, he's always been number one, even when he switched to Miami and then switched back to Cleveland, you know, it's like now the Cleveland Jersey is the number one Jersey. And so uh, I think the, um, the thing that, that is being missed in our community is just that there there's no consistency. And so a player that was getting paid a nice salary can get dropped and then basically have nothing. You know, like, I don't know how much of a salary like Merck had on Envy, but going to Justice Pro, I would imagine the salary is different. You know, I would imagine yeah. that there's there's a difference in how much he's getting paid. And that's a huge pay cut. You know, it's like and you have no say in it. It's like you're dropped. Oh, so I don't have a job anymore is what you're telling me. You know, it's it, it's right. very it's very tough and there's no protection and so um and I'm sure they have buyouts and things like that where they have to get paid a certain amount to leave. And I just think we need more of that because when Robbie was on here and well well I already said his name. So <laughs> I remember him mentioning he was like I don't really want to say this, but he did mention that there's a few teams but there's only like four that actually have buyouts on their players. Uh and it's the teams that can afford to do that. So that's my opinion. I'm sticking to it. I do agree with you, goalie. I think that less is more. I think that uh, the playoffs, the reason why they're more watched, the reason why the Super Bowl is the most watched thing is it's one game, but more people watch it than a regular NFL game because it's one game, you know, uh, and it's the reason why the NFL playoffs get so much, so many views is because there's not even seven game series. It's one game. You win or lose to go on. And the NBA People start watching, like Landon, start watching the playoffs now. But then when it gets down to, you know, the Eastern Conference Finals and then the Western Conference Finals, that's when the mass of people start watching because then they put it on network television where you can watch it without having, like, you know, some cable channel. You can watch it on basic cable. And then the and I know the NHL, the NHL playoffs are going on, too. I'm not going to hit on hockey, yeah. but yeah. I know, I know yeah, goalie yeah. and a lot of people are, are fans of NHL. I don't watch it, but, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. And, and I see somebody like Scotty who's saying that most NFL contracts aren't guaranteed. And I'm not saying there necessarily needs to be a guarantee, but our community right now, it's becoming saturated with players that are really good. And I did this tweet last night and I erased it, but I can say it now because it'll make more sense. And then we're going to take a quick commercial break. But what I said is there's no other team in the, in the NBA that will ever win eight championships in a row like the Boston Celtics did. It's just not going to happen from like 59 to 67 or whatever. And there's no team. And I also believe that we're not going to see a team win like complexity. They're not going to win as many in a row. We're not. We're just not going to see that. You're not going to see a team. Now, people, I knew that I had to delete that tweet because I was like, I don't have time to fight on Twitter with people that are like, Optic is going to win everything. You know, <laughs> and I think COD Champs proved, and yes, they have a different team now, but COD Champs proved that despite all expectations, you can't guarantee success. There are other really, really, really good teams that are in existence right now. And But Optic is Optic. It's just like LeBron is not Kobe. He's LeBron. He's not Mike. He's LeBron. You know, Optic is a really, really, really good team, and they will go down as one of the best rosters and one of the best squads that we've seen in Call of Duty history, like the Modern Warfare 3 Optic gaming squad did. And now the good thing is they're actually on MLG and they're on the circuit because back then, you know, they had to fly over to Tommy's land and... Um, play in EGLs, and so I, I think that <laughs> I think that. Why uh, you call it Tommy's Land? What what was that going to be? It was <laughs> <laughs> some magical place or something. <laughs> no, I just think we have to. Give, I think we have to give Call of Duty some time, and uh, we're not going to see repeats of Cole. Um, and I think we will get to a place where it is more entertaining. I think we will get to a place where there is less games, but there's more value to it, like an event when we watch on the weekends. Uh, at the same time, I think we got to be patient. You know, we got to be patient and wait for it. And until then, goalie's just going to have to, you know, watch 40 Deal with league it. matches a week and no, want to kill himself and stab his eyeballs out when the 10K is on. 
He's he's currently crying. <laughs> he may not be able to hear him, but <laughs> it's all right. We'll get him a tissue. Don't worry, guys. We look after him. All right, when we come back, we're going to actually uh, talk about some mid-season stats. Uh, I got the guys from COD underscore stats to send me some interesting stats by email. And then, of course, we also went on the site and found some for ourselves, and we're going to look over uh, those stats when we come back on the other side of 60 seconds. We'll see you guys. Oh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello. 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 Wait, is that a... Hello. Unless you're recording SpongeBob. Hello. 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 <laughs> I was trying to make you guys think I was like frozen. Um, yeah, we totally thought that. Back. <laughs> that was oh. such a poor attempt. The S T I K S. Um, Ooh. You like that, huh? Nobody noticed yeah. that K S is the last two letters. That's right. I didn't notice. Put that. my own name wow. in the title. That's no, really okay. That oh, okay. <laughs> that we it just it just turned out that way. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say you are a genius. <laughs> <laughs> Because that's game. awesome. <laughs> All right, so uh, these stats, and Goalie hopefully has this document ready. We're going to take a look at some of these stats, and I'm just going to walk down the list. So those of you that are in this Skype call with me, you can follow along. Oh, my and... Okay, so the first one we're going to look at is on... Katie. All right. Depends on how oh, Skype feels it. about that. <laughs> dude, I'll just dude. listen here. Okay, so right now in the league, KD ratio is led by Temp and then Octane, and we have Formal in third, and the top five is rounded out with Skump and Hook. I'm going to make sure I say that correctly. Uh, now, Temp has only played 28 maps. Do you guys think that – has anybody watched him play? I haven't been able to actually watch him play. Has anybody watched Temp play from Elevate? No, because none of them stream. <laughs> like, it's so annoying that they they rarely stream. I've I've been watching him play against other teams though. I've been watching him a lot. He's um people like to I don't like this, but in the COD community, people are so negative. They like to give players that perform well online the term oh, yeah. warrior or oh, yeah. like just a yep. bunch of ridiculous things. And it's with it's with every team that performs well. Like when Envy started performing well after the roster change, people started calling them online warriors as if like yeah. you can consistently you know, host somebody or whatever, which yeah. isn't possible. It's just parroting whatever, you know, that current streamer that they're watching says, and that's really irritating to me because Temp is a great player. I mean, he's, yeah. he beat – um they beat – who did they beat off host recently? And Temp was like positive 20 or something. Trying, I was casting this match, and I can't remember it. Um, But, yeah, Elevate's a great team. Temp's a great player. I mean, they got whooped by Optic yesterday a little bit, and, you know, you saw a little banter from Crimsix about that. Oh, they just played better, you know? Tommy knows banter. Tommy, say banter. No. Banter. Oh. <laughs> banter. Banter. Yes. yes. Banter. Isn't that an animal in Star Wars or something? Oh, my God. Please tell me it is. Isn't. That is where banter originated from, an animal in Star Wars. Banter. You heard it here first, guys. <laughs> so, Temp, Octane, Formal, Scump, and Hook. Now, here's the funny thing. You could technically say that these are all warriors. And you could say Happy and Saints are warriors, too. But the reality is, these are like Scump is a warrior who has performed online. Formal is a warrior who has performed online. I think, you know, Attach used to be called a warrior, but he's performed online. And so, That's I, I think it's... Yeah, it's what our community does. We call someone a warrior because they haven't proven themselves on land. And then the, the thing that sucks is if they go to land with a bad team, then they yeah, still man. look like an online warrior, even though they're probably really good, but they just went with a bad squad, you know? Yeah, and uh, then it's the same – I'm sorry. It's the same concept as, like, okay. online weapons, you know? Like, people people were saying the Scorpion is an online gun in Black Ops. What? What does that even mean? Like, what online gun in the past has ever actually turned out to be an online-only gun? None of them. That just yeah. that bugs me. I don't know. People that never have never played online on land before are coining the term online guns, and that really bothers me. But I mean, that's just misinformation that's being sense. spread as fact, and it's not people's fault. It's just it's just what our community does. You know, it's just what happens. It's like the what is it, the telephone thing where like you whisper something in somebody's ear and the message changes eventually. It's stuff like that. Yeah. What? It's Did a you, like whisper I, like the that game you play, and it's like by the end of the like the end oh, of the, telephone, the real game. people. I thought you were talking about on real telephones, and I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> it's just when something gets repeated enough, it kind of gets it kind of gets skewed to where like it means something different. So here's the thing. Listen to this. On host temp has a 1.79 KD. That is utterly ridiculous. <laughs> Off host he has a 1.23. 
So still a great player. A one point exactly. two away off host when he's not hosting is still the highest actually. To put that in perspective, a, at the list, except for Octane has a one point two eight. Yeah, I was gonna say to put that in perspective. Attach is a one point forty four KD online. Yeah. So. Yeah. Now you want to hear something funny? This doesn't even make sense. Scumps on host. Guess guess Scumps on host KD. Five point three. No, no, let's see, let's see who's the closest. <laughs> Five point three. Don't look, I see you touching buttons over there. Um, I don't one, even have one point oh, four. <laughs> I was one reading the four. chat. What'd you say? I was one reading the four. chat. I'll, I'll say one point three. Four point four. One point three. What did you? Who, who else chimed in? I said one point four. Okay, Landon. Sticking with five point three. <laughs> Scump on host has the highest KD. No, clearly not. I'll say I'm gonna say two. I'll say two for real. One point eight. He has a two point zero four. No. <laughs> oh my god. I guess that should be funny. <laughs> but here's Scump the is a monster. Off, he goes down a whole point eight eight. Like he goes thing? down all the way to one point one six. He gets forty seven kills. Oh, that's only one map. Don't even look at that. Don't even, don't listen. That's bad. <laughs> don't even, that forty seven kills. You you guys didn't hear that. All right. So, <laughs> all right. Let's go to the next one. The next one is CTF. All right. So <laughs> number one CTF caps is attach, and number two is scump. Number three is replays. Number four is theory. And number five is sensor, rounding out the top CTF caps. Um, this is, I think, this is an interesting list in my opinion. I was telling goalie earlier, like replays is technically the OBJ, but this hard is a theme alert. You're gonna hear Attach's name above replays in CTF caps, hardpoint caps, uh, and in one of the S and D, um, in one of the S and D numbers there. Except Attach isn't on the slaying list or the kills per respawn list uh and that's all that matters I, kingdom just kd bro that's all that matters hey it's <laughs> uh, online it seems like scump <laughs> is working really well as a um as the person running the flag for uh optic gaming uh scump is rounding them out and if you think about it if attach has 25 caps and replace who's on the same team has 21 caps uh these guys that are capping almost two per game both of yeah. them in those 13 maps i mean that's kind of unbeatable the next optic player isn't until ninth with it, with Krim. Yeah, and look, J Cap's still in fourteenth. So, I mean, like you got three of the four players in the top twenty on denial yeah. for uh, CTF caps. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, and I, I thought it was interesting that Parasite was there because uh, he's been I doing don't... a lot of OBJ work in AW though. I, like he he he's... moved out of his AR role. So, How is I mean... Neslo above Enable and Parasite with seven? Bro, Neslo was dominating whenever he was a sub for TK. It's yeah, but it's caps per seven. game. It's caps per game. That's how he's above them. Eight eight. Okay. Yeah. Because he. Yeah. That he only played eight maps, but still. Yeah. So I I think um this this list um this CTF for me uh it just kind of reveals that what happened what did I miss no I just look on the chat don't worry about it. What's in the chat? What am I missing? No, someone asked where Tommy was from, and someone commented, "I ran." I thought it was. I just thought. It was <laughs> I'm sorry. No, it's ah, uh, no, no, no. What? <laughs> what? No, I, was I just thought it was funny. funny. And it, I asked this dude what his Twitter was to clear this up. I asked this dude what his Twitter was, and he said he doesn't have Twitter because he's not from a country that has Twitter. And I said, "What country are you from?" And he said, "Iran." Oh, uh, okay. that's, that's a lot less funny. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry. I'm gonna clear that up. I'm not from Iran. I'm not from Iran. Can you just be Iran for the sake of the view counter, please? Wait, let me just go. Let me just go get my flag. Let me just go get my flag. Thank you, dude. Thank just you for right committing. Right? <laughs> All right. So, art point caps. <laughs> I don't know why I just typed my Twitter okay. handle in the chat. I don't know what that was. I was trying to mention somebody, and I typed my Twitter handle in the chat. <laughs> I'm sorry, I cut you off. Go ahead. No, you're good. So Burns Off is blazing past everyone with yes. 206 total caps in hardpoint, uh, with 11 per game. There's only three players with double digits. The other, right behind him, is Jerd, which is actually uh, that's surprising to me. Uh, yeah, that Jerd's is. number two um, in hardpoint caps. He must die a lot. I mean, uh, that would be my <laughs> guess. I'm just saying. Um, when we when we looked at KD, I don't remember seeing his name on there. So he's uh, in the CTF cap, so I think he's like sixth. 
with uh, 1.4 so taps per game. There. He's probably there, runs there, OBJ. Yeah. Well, Sometimes. I guess. Yeah. It's, is there roles anymore? Like, because then you have a Tatch again right here as number three like, in hard Looking at these stats, it's just like you're saying the most dominant players being in every single category. It's like, yeah. Well, based on line, anyway, you know, land's so really different. Dominance is dominance. Yeah. In a way, like you see <laughs> Attach and Scump who are crazy, like amazing slayers, and they're at the top of the CTF caps. Like that, in any other game, that doesn't happen. Like, I think the yeah. reason Scump's up there is because they're like, Scump, take the flag. Or when Krim dies, Scump gets the flag, and mm-hmm. Scump just kills everything and is able to cap it. Like, it's just, I don't know. I think there's roles in a way, and I, we've gone to this a lot. Like, we, this is always like a yeah, topic yeah. we mentioned, but. Uh, I think there are roles, but based off these stats, it, you could literally think that there's not. Like, I would I wouldn't yeah. blame anyone coming to this game. And be like, no, there's no roles. Like, the best players are leading in CTF caps when they're not yeah. actually the OBJ role. But yeah. I feel like the the only roles that really exist are just weapon roles. Like, so just what weapon that person primarily Bad. uses. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, and, and a lot of the times they will determine their positioning. Like Clayster, he's you know you can you already know how Clayster's going to play. Or Scump, you know that they have very different roles in game. It just depends on what that player is the best at, and yeah. it, ultimately in this game at least, it, term, it, it depends on their weapon. So, until we see Black yeah. Ops Three with hopefully no double jumping and all this crazy movement, mm-hmm. I think that that's when we'll see roles. It's probably gonna happen, bro. Yeah, don't say that. We're gonna something. be running on walls or doing something. It's, it's yeah, we gotta have some kind of gimmicky movement, I guess. All right, next. Well, I took a real negative turn. <laughs> Slayer, uh, and then the Slayer category is kills per respawn per ten minutes. I think they still do it that way. Uh, Hook is number one, uh, the most famous online warrior that we have in competitive Call of Duty right now, oh, <laughs> according to warrior. Twitter. According to Twitter, um, we have Formal number two, Scump number three, Happy number four, and Temp again is number five. And Saints, I think I'm gonna just give this prediction. I think Saints may finish. He, I think he will finish in the top three in the Slayer category for the season, and he may be number one because he is the best Slayer on the on the uh, squad right now, and he is his ASM one is ridiculous. Just gonna rise from, with the new team from what I've seen. What'd you say? And a lot of these, I'm gonna say I agree with you. like a lot of these things are gonna change because these are like well, how so many have they won in a row? How many? Have, Eleven. Eleven games yeah. in a row. NV has. Yeah, Saints is going bananas, and people can, oh, they haven't played, last time we talked about this, people said they hadn't played good teams, or you guys were talking about on Friday, and people were saying that on the Friday recap show, and they were talking about, well, they haven't played good teams, and I was like, okay, if you're going to say that, you have to say that for every other team, you have to say Optic hasn't played good teams, like, you, if, if every team in the league, if there's only four good teams, then we can only count the win and loss record and stats when they play those four teams, like, these are all pro players, um, kind of drives me bananas when people say that, but um, yeah. in the Slayer category, I didn't see any surprises. I mean, it's good to see Burns up here. I mean, at 12th in the Slayer category, that's pretty good. Burns, you've seen the things that he can do on Hardpoint. My God, I am not surprised Burns is I, up I there. Actually, I posted a picture, or not a picture, actually I did. It was like a, a screen cap of my COD fantasy team. I had Burns. Everyone was like, why do you have Burns off there? Uh-huh. That's why. That's why. You know. You know. Uh, crazy Panda <laughs> Bean, thank you for the compliment. I'm glad you like the stream. Um, so uh, there, there's not really any other surprises. I am surprised to see Krim in 16th. Now, do you guys think that Krim is not the Krim of... Because uh, let me say this. When he played with Aix and TP and Karma, we're talking about Aix was a great slayer uh, in the last two games, and so was Karma. But Krim was still able to always... There was never a time when that dude was not top five uh, as a slayer. And so do you think it's just... The number of people that people that are in our community like Hook, Happy, Temp, these are players, Octane, Chino, that you wouldn't see on this list. Uh, TCM, uh, probably even Zuma, that you may not have seen on this list last year. Um, but even Neslo is above Krim and Slaying. Do you think it's just because is, is Optics kill just kills, are they just spread out so evenly? Um, or has he started to pick up the OBJ role and that has diminished his number of kills per, like per respawn? That's really tough to judge. Um, I'd have to say that, yeah, a huge part of it is just because of the, the numbers that are coming out of Optic now alongside Karma and Scump and Formal. I mean, you can pretty much bet your money on Scump and Formal that they're going to perform in a map, you know? Yeah, that's very true. It's got to be hard to play on that team and, and know that, you know, you're sharing kills with <laughs> the best slayers in the game. Like, yeah. Never. Uh, that, 
Yeah, that. and this is definitely not an attack against Krim or anything like that, because, I mean, we all know that... I honestly think Krim 6 could touch whatever FPS he wants, and he's going to perform. Like, that's that's just the seeing him perform in Halo. COD, Halo, then COD, then CSO, there, and then COD again. Is My there goodness. any other team? Is there any other team that has... Like, I'm looking at the top 20. Is there any other team that has three of their roster, three players in the top 20 for kills per respawn? Like, um, think about it. Slaying... I'm looking at it, but I don't... I think I see Clayster... <laughs> Uh, they are. They have Happy. They have Clayster. Burns. J-Cap, Clayster. Anticity. Yeah, and, wait, no, it's AR. I'm getting confused. I'm trying to <laughs> yeah, I, I wait, isn't Anticity, yeah. Burns, and Happy, aren't they all on AR? Yeah. Boom. Wow. <laughs> hey, Good shout. Yeah. Next, yeah. Hey, hey, <laughs> I, dare, I dare somebody to tweet AR is the next Optic Gaming. Ooh. Someone in the Please. chat, dude. Not me. Not it. I just uploaded a video today. I need to like someone in, bro. I don't need I don't need to be just... <laughs> Folks is like Come so far ahead of us. All right. <laughs> next one is uh, Search and Destroy. Uh, Search and Destroy stats. So Search and Destroy KD. Attaches number one with a 1.44 with 21 maps played. I thought that was an interesting stat. Octane and Parasite. Uh, I keep saying it, and I'll keep saying it. Parasite's one of the best search and destroy players in this game. He's got to land himself on the right team that knows what they're doing and pushes right. And uh, when I was listening to TK yesterday in the searches that I got to hear, Parasite was basically the shot caller. He was the one telling them what to do. It was just like old school Neslo on TK when they first started. It was like he was he was calling everything. He was like, hold back, don't move. And when they didn't listen to him and it actually didn't work, which was actually a lot, um, he got very, very frustrated. I, I think our game may be missing coaches because of the speed of AW. I think coaches would help a lot. I just want to throw that out there, especially for Search and Destroy. I really just think- my- I don't. I don't think coaches, coaches really have a place in Call of Duty. That's just my opinion. I mean, what are, what are they going to call? They're going to call just like in Black Ops Two. I guess what hard point times and rotation times. Have to, it, that the players do fine with that. I just don't see a coach really being a necessary thing. I mean, you can, if you need to contact someone about like their opinion on something in gaming, just hit up another pro player. I mean, you guys are running eights and stuff all the time and all this other stuff. I, I just don't feel like a coach would really be that necessary, especially with how you said. I feel like the speed of the game would kind of work against a coach. Yeah. You know, I think they're not the, in the game. It just looks kind of chaotic. Just four screens yeah. boosting all over the place. I think the 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 reason for the existence of a coach, and Mr. X kind of admitted it. You know, it's that you control the player's environment. Like you control the the mood and the attitude of the players. Okay. You know, and so you don't have to have like players don't have to yell at each other to shut up and pay attention and just play. You have a coach that does that. You know, and so. Yeah. Complexity success, a lot of it, and it was an and EG until he left. But it was like, I mean, you think about it, they fell off, you know. But it's like Mr. X, he just kept them in check, and it, and that's what you need. And especially if you have attitudes like, I mean, Krim, we're talking about Krim and Aix playing on the same team. TP was not that talkative. I mean, he talked a lot, but he wasn't talkative in the negative sense. And then you had Karma who just roamed around and did what he wanted. And so. When you have the, that strong of personality on a team, it's just like okay. X coming in, coming in the stream yesterday and telling Krim to delete his tweet. You know, it's like you have someone who all they do is basically control the it's environment. Like a and it's a, it, well, the thing is, is that somebody said it once. I think it was Mr. X joking about it on our show when he came on. But he said he was like, you know, it's glorified cheerleader. He's like, you know, you you keep the team. <laughs> happy and popular and and you keep them in a good mood and i think if you really think about it with this optic gaming you'd never have to worry about attitude if you had a or like tk the troubles they had yesterday if you had somebody standing behind them that knew the game and they knew they knew the game and they were just like okay stop you know arguing with each other just focus up focus up you just got to do this you just got to do that he's gonna do this and then when parasite said make sure you do this if there was a second voice that was like okay nameless don't move you know, like they just repeated what Parasite said because they were lo- looking at Nameless' screen and they could see he wasn't listening and he wasn't yeah. crouching. And they seconded that motion, so to speak. Um, that's how I think a coach could help. I agree with you. Gameplay wise, they might not offer the most because this isn't Halo where there's going to be a sword respawning in a moment or a sniper. <laughs> but in Call of Duty I, and people can say that I'm wrong, but you even look at like Optic Nation attitude really reflects outcomes on uh for these teams like if they don't like each other okay. it's hard to give to get victories it's so, also good I, to have that fifth man so you can actually have a majority yes. rule on like a decision so that, okay i, I think, can respect that 
I think and merch I think, should I mean, stay within me, but yeah. honestly, whatever it takes to get these players to stop acting like children on Twitter <laughs> and stuff, I think that that's a good. If they can afford a coach to fly them out to events and stuff, so be yeah. it. Let's get it, let's get coaches going. You just change my mind in a matter of two minutes. <laughs> I really hope this game is slower. I hope this next game is slower so that coaches can be involved in some yeah. way. Like, I want not that I don't, back, bro. I, Advanced Warfare is fun to, to play, but to watch, it's just like, I don't know. It's just, I feel like I have ADD. I'm just watching like so many things at one time, and that's the it's thing with coaches. There's so it's many just, engagements, man. Yeah. Just like yeah. what people were talking about in the beginning of the game, who we were like, we need you to just stop hyping up 30 bombs because they happen all the time. It's, yeah. it's expected. A 30 bomb Black is expected. Black Ops 2 was like, now. whoa, you get a 40 bomb? That's unheard of. It's yeah. like, I saw pro players uploading like 20 bombs in Ghost because <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, yeah. For real? That game was like yeah, <laughs> I mean, you think about it in Ghost because of how quickly you died, people would upload gameplays when they were like 31 and 17, you know, and it was like that's a good game. Like I got a 31 bomb, you know, like now you're 65 and like 43. It's like, oh, okay. <laughs> right. Yeah, now it's yeah, like, yeah, oh, eight, eight dropped <laughs> You know, fifty-four kills on uh, on Rise or whatever. You know, so it's yeah. like now it's Chino like, dropped fifty-three kills on whoever. You know, it's, yeah. for almost every single, for almost for a lot of the game modes, if you're not dying on the objective a number of times, you're doing it wrong. You know, it's just yeah, I, simple. I, like, I agree. I agree. I agree. All right, so the next one we're gonna look at is map stats, and these are just the, now these are some of the interesting ones that I just kind of pulled out when like when I was looking. Um, so as far as the map stats go, you can kind of see that. The three twos, like game fives, are the rarest um, rarest type of match that we see, which actually shortens things, which I'm sure Goalie does not complain about. Um, because it shortens streams, it shortens the game plays. Uh, three O's, 30%, and three ones, 40%. And then what I was looking at is some of the interesting stats. Now, these are, and I'm going to tell you guys, because you would be, you, it would, if you really thought, like, dang, Optic Nations never won a game five, well, they've only played one. And the reason is that these <laughs> stats are from. After roster changes. Oh, that's good to know. So post roster change map stats. And so Optic Nation has not won a game five since the roster change. But if you look all the way over, their round 11 win percentage is 80%. So 80% of the time, if they get to round 11, they win. Uh, And that's in, that's only, well, it says round 11 loss is once, round 11 win is four. So out of the five times they've made to round 11, they've won four times. So, um, that's pretty good, you know. And I was looking at the Optic Gaming um, stat there, and you can see their game five win percentage for Optic Gaming is thirty three percent. I thought that was really interesting, that they've actually they've played three times and they've lost two and won one of their game fives, which I would expect them to actually win those. But you know, check out Rise. Um, yeah, Rise won the five K the other day, and they were they were playing fantastically the entire day. When you, you know? win eighty percent of your game fives, you. are and you've played five of them. You're, in, I mean, you're in a good place. That's it. That's <laughs> yeah, oh, Rise not, Online yeah. Warriors guys. They're warriors. They're never gonna. Be, yeah, you know. <laughs> Just had to throw that in there, I guess. All right. Um, let's scroll over to the next one. I call it three O's. I don't remember what exactly it's about. The next stat. Oops, I did something weird. Three O's. All right, so this one is, it just shows the percentage of 3-0s, 3-1s, 3-2s, 2-3s, 1-3s, and 0-3s. How many times the team has been 3-0'd themselves? And you can see that the team that's been 3-0'd the most is Rise, that <laughs> we were just talking about. <laughs> and Rise has not 3-0'd anyone, um, unfortunately. Uh, you can see Denial has six, and Optic Gaming with nine 3-0s uh, is utterly ridiculous in, in, my per- in my opinion. And they're the only team that has not been 3-0'd. Uh, and I, I, I don't know who would ever do it. Like who, if, if Optic Gaming got three would I think we'd all be like, what? It really happened. Uh, but they've only lost, they've only lost three matches. So, uh, that does make a difference. Um, you can see where Elevate dominates is in that, in, is in the three ones. Cause they've been playing extremely well. I mean, Elevate has just been, Second in the league, um, yeah. yeah, they've been doing great. They've been winning. Uh, I actually tried to get classic on today, but he had school. Uh, but we'll try to get him uh, on. <laughs> and I'm going to tell the stream because I don't think Fizzerp would mind. But I showed the guys <laughs> in the chat. But yeah, uh, so. I hit Fizzerp up to see if he wanted to be on the show today. And he didn't respond. And literally as the show started, he DM'd and said, I just woke up. I mean, so this, <laughs> this dude woke up at like 6.30 p.m. Like, <laughs> I don't know his time zone. Like That's bat. crazy. Like, All right. Yeah. Next stat. 
a Sorry, bad. guys. I took Fizzer's spot. I apologize, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> we just no, Tom, Tommy took Fizzer's spot. Fizzer that will be me, mate. Oh. oh. <laughs> the bottom <laughs> of the... I'm just kidding. I'm totally you took his, <laughs> Tommy took Fizzer's spot. We were going to do a three-man show, and I was like, eh, I'll just pull somebody else on. Why not? Oh, Tommy said he was going to watch. Normally, Tommy is like, you know... City, I mean, you're what time watching. Is it, uh, it's 20 to 1 in the morning here. I'm sorry. What is that in real time? No. <laughs> no. I'm going to say thank you, Tommy. Oh, he pulled a rage. Oh, no. He pulled a rage. You've been hanging out with rage too much. No, but I appreciate you saying 20 to 1 because instead of saying nor point what whatever like sometimes when benson says the time i'm so confused like because zero yeah. like the way he says zero like language yeah it, I, it uses me so thank you for <laughs> 20 to 1. so it's about to be 1 a.m um you're the real mvp yes. for coming on the show today all right so sure. this next one is showing series win percentages when they go up like 1-0 or 2-0 or 1-2 or 2-1 and now this is since the roster changes? Now, this doesn't make sense to me. So maybe I need to hit up the guys at COD underscore stats. But it reports on here that when TK has gone up, like when they win game one, they win a, they've won 100% of the time. How is that even possible since the roster really? changes? That must be why. That's because what I was, that's what I was thinking. That means if they win the hard point, they win the series. Like, that is a great stat. They're pretty good in S and D, I think it's fair to say, though. Like with Parasite, yeah. with the addition of Parasite to that yeah, lineup, yeah, yeah. I feel like they're such a good S and D squad now. Um, I still can't get over the fact that Phase traded Parasite. I I just can't understand why, but that's. Just I mean, person. that's because they hated each other. <laughs> so so they did <laughs> not that's agree that's on attitude thing, and that that that's one hundred percent attitude. It's people. Yeah. Um, Parasite is a is an extremely great player, and I asked him when he was on the one v one, so. I don't feel bad saying it, but, you know, people have a hard time dealing with him sometimes, you know, because he's very straightforward and he doesn't mind it. You know, he has an ego and he's not afraid to, to mention and to say things. And, yeah, um, you know, it's just I, the way I he rolls. About it too. I, I, I talked to him about it, too. He was like he said something along, along the lines of like, that's like that's why people don't like me. Like when I when I'm really passionate about Call of Duty and that like I show it, I don't show it in the best way. And it might not be the best for the community. But he was just like, this is my job. I love it. And I'm really passionate about what I do. So, yeah, I'm going to take it seriously. I'm going to get mad when things don't go my way. And I respected that. It's just, you know. Here's the issue, and you can tell me, Landon, you can kind of chime in on this if this is wrong or right. It completely has 180 or 360. uh, No, you can't say 360. It's turned around (laughs) completely. The TK team, like the way that that team used to be is they were entertaining. Like Dylan, when it was like, when it was Dylan, even when Nezlo was around, you know, but when Nezlo left and it was like Dylan and Looney and Sharp and Goon, they had fun, they laughed. Even when those dudes would lose, they would laugh and call themselves detriments. Like, and they're losing oh, yeah. games, they're they're dropping out of series early, they're ending, and you watch Sharp's videos and he's laughing about, you know, not placing top eight or something. And now you have Parasite who will not settle for any of that. And what I've said in the past is he He'll make that team better if they let him stay around long enough. But he is going to have to yell at them for a good, like, two months <laughs> for, for for him to stop yelling. And the only way he'll stop yelling is when the team succeeds, when they're successful, when they get to the finals of a 10K, when they win a 10K, when they beat Optic in a series, when 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 good things happen to that team. Because he, he wants to go to X Games. He doesn't want to lose. You know, that's not – it's not a joke to him, you know. And, and right. I get it, like mm-hmm. you said. Maybe he communicates in the wrong way. I mean, Landon, do you, would you agree with that? Like, it changes completely the persona of TK for the long Absolutely. run? Absolutely. You know, TK to me was a team, it was kind of like, not necessarily like a family, but they were always kind of the team that was, um, you know, regardless of roster changes, they always try to stay the same. They always try to keep the consistency um, of, you know, the four guys that they had in the roster. You know, they wanted to keep Goon. They wanted to keep Sharp. Um, yeah. You know, we obviously know with roster many, it ended up changing. But, um, you know, now having... Honestly, this team changed, like you said, did a 360. They have two new players, uh, Nameless and Parasite. Both are very passionate, especially Parasite, uh, due to the fact that, like you said, Parasite wants to win. He doesn't care if he steps on people's feet. And, uh, you know, TK to me was a team that was, um, you know, kind of like they like to mess with each other. They were a family, of, they were friends. And not saying that Parasite is not a friend or anything like that, but he's a much more serious type of person. He wants to win, yeah. and he doesn't mind yelling at you. Uh, if you messed up, we obviously saw that in the streams, you know, yesterday or whatnot, uh, yeah. or the day before. But you know, uh, this team has has experienced a lot of different things. While I don't like this roster, I think it was a good move for them. 
Uh, I think this had to happen if they want to be successful in, in some sort of way. This isn't the roster that I personally would have picked out for them, um, but I think them being a little bit more serious rather than, like you said, Sharp, laughing and doing certain things I think is better uh, for them in the long run. So I think Will Sharp this, survive on TK? I think so. I think he's I think a pretty he's consistent solidif- player. Yeah, he's, he's kind of solidified like himself. TK. Right. Yeah, when you're but the here's face, the thing. Like, pretty yeah, but when you're, I mean, Nate Shot was the face of Optic, but he eventually had to throw in the towel. It's like when I don't, I don't think they get rid of him. I, I honestly don't like he, he's like. It's a shame because obviously, as you were talking about, like the the old TK, you know, Neslo Gunjar theory and Sharp have been on kind of the roster on and off it be it since black ops 2 so now they're trying to switch things up obviously parasite's a bit like marmite some people love him some people hate him uh but i guess they've come to the conclusion that they can't you know keep a core three or you know keep you know a select um you know select amount of players they have to kind of switch it up because what they're doing at the moment is just not working i agree 100 percent. and i look at that team and here's my concern um, and this is why I started, well, let me not go there, but here's my concern. Um, Sharp is a different type of person. Like he's not, I don't know if Sharp can take it. Like when Parasite okay. yells a lot, I don't really hear Sharp <laughs> chiming in. It's almost like he just listens. And then, but if he gets frustrated to the point where, you know, my call of duties or my, my YouTube channel is going good, you know, I'll go get on another team and I'll be satisfied with that. Blah, 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 blah. Because this team is going to have to make a decision, and I guarantee it. When they, if they don't make X Games and they have to make a roster change, it's like we, their decision is going to be, okay, who do, who are we going to trade? Are we going to get rid of Parasite, who is a great player, but he kind of rubs some of the players the wrong way and the community, or are we going to, or are we going to let you know Brandon slide into another role? Are they going to Merc slash Rambo, you know, Sharp? And so, I think it's a. Um, We've seen it happen to a lot of players. We've seen it happen to Sensor and Apathy. You know, this new guy comes in, aches, and says, you're off the team. This is my team now. Thanks for giving yeah. me the captainship, by the but, way. You, but you, it's like it's like if you get on a boat. It's like if if the captain of a boat <laughs> lets somebody else goodbye. drive for a while, and when they take over driving, they say, hey, captain, get the little dinghy and go off into the sea by yourself. <laughs> this is my boat now. <laughs> and, then the, and then the guy that took over driving ends up off the team as well. And then it's a whole new team. And so now Sensor, who's like full-time Mr. Phase, the face of, of Phase, you know, the weightlifting and all that kind of stuff, the fitness stuff, um, is now like trying mm-hmm. to have to find a backdoor way of being like Imbos and staying as a part of them, not really yeah. being on the team. And then he's dropping hints to make us think that he's going to go back on Phase. And I think Sharp is that guy. He can't not be TK. That's just weird. You know, like Sharp not being – he's been on TK the entire time it's existed. And for him to not be on TK would be strange to me. So, I don't know. I think that I think honestly, if the the opportunity arose or you know came up, I think he would leave TK with the current roster he's at now. Honestly, I do. I think if it was back to the old roster and they were playing well, like looking, at, I just went to Cody Sportspedia. By the way, I looked at their stats. You know, they placed fourth, they placed seventh through eighth, they placed third, and they placed eighth. That's all their placings at uh, advanced in advanced warfare so far. Yeah. Um, you know they're they're a good team, but this isn't the team that I like. And I think honestly, if you know roster changes came around, they're looking at stats or looking at players and sharp. You know we, they maybe have to talk to sharp, and they say, you know what, man, we really appreciate you for you know being on here, switching over from back on VVV. You know yeah. I think he, if he found a team, if he was in a solid spot, he would leave that team. Honestly, I really do. If the, if if it keeps up the way it is, because I agree, I think the sharp and parasite. The sharp yeah. and nameless thing it is a good, you know. They both make YouTube videos. That's great, but it's just it's it's weird to me. I just don't like this team. But I think the decision to make a roster change was a good one. Overall, I'm not sure how this roster in particular would have worked. I would have liked them to. I would have liked to see them pick up someone like Apathy, maybe instead of Parasite. I think that would have been a lot easier. Uh, yeah. um, personally, I think Apathy and, and Sharp they've played together in the past, and I'm not trying to like go yeah. off on roster changes and whatnot. They're but, buddies. They they do videos. Uh, they together. feed off each other. Yeah. yeah. They'd be. That's they, how sharp I, is. Somehow, at some point, teams have to start thinking like that. There is there is something to the other side of this competitive gaming thing, which is streaming and entertaining. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, hold up. 
can try and look for chat. I do know exactly what you mean, though. They, try, they need yeah, to they, all produce their own content and brand themselves. Like we're seeing Mir do now. He's finally taking advantage of that optic really happy brand. About that, yeah. yeah, I think we're all yeah. really happy that Mir is picking that up. You know, and he's he's got something good going for him. You know, he's got a very different personality compared to a lot of the guys that consistently put out content. Yeah. All right, before we talk about, uh, so before we go on to UGC, which we don't know much about, but we'll uh, say as much <laughs> as we can, uh, I do this last stat, this first bloods per map, um, there was something in here that I thought was interesting, and I'm going to call out Tommy, but <laughs> um, I think it's interesting because Attach and Clayster are one and two at first bloods, and they're on the same team. So that basically means when you play Denial and Search and Destroy, you're going to die first. Like, yeah. it's, it's, it's interesting. Played, that lethal with snipers, maps. though. What'd you say? Uh, like, yeah, 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 like yeah, yeah, attach yeah, yeah, lethal yeah. with a sniper, yeah. so it sticks I think the only expected. team that, that gets overkill, man. Mm, oh, don't go there, please. <laughs> no, he, he said the word. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. If TR was in this league, they would have players on this list right here, oh, on this first blood list. If they were in the COD league, they, they've. They, uh, they, those Aqua? guys. Yeah, they, those guys are good at getting those first bloods. Um, they're just a good team in general, but it's unfortunate that they didn't make it in the league. So here's my question for Tommy. Tommy made a video and today um, about Optic Nation and their roster, which was like of our it's questions on Twitter. That, go ahead. What? Oh, no, no, carry on, carry on. Carry on. Okay. <laughs> and so <laughs> Tommy made a video. <laughs> it was a good video. Like, I actually agreed with most of what you said. I just yeah. don't know if... I think Imbos is one of those players who gets blamed a lot when he's on a team that doesn't work for him. Now, unfortunately, he's not a flexible player. Like, Imbos is good at playing a specific way, and if he can't play that way, then he doesn't play very well. Um, it's also and, bad for him because he, he, like, puts a spotlight to it that people blame him, especially now. Like, he's... He's, yeah. he's pretty much establishing himself as that player that gets blamed for things, which is what the same position Sensor was in for the past several months. Need a video now about Bose has that spot. And, and how he deals with it. You don't want to – this is the bad time to do that. You don't want that, man. Yeah. Well, and I think so what Tommy said is he, he thinks that Imbos is the factor. Like, it is Imbos. And if you guys noticed, you probably didn't. But um, this and a couple more of the stats we've actually gone through. His name was on there. I think he was on CTF um, or Hardpoint. And he's here at, in num in fourth in first bloods, um, and Killa's on there as well in eleventh. And so, uh, my question, I guess, for you guys and 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 for you, Tommy, like I know you've probably seen some comments on your video. What's the consensus? And um, I, I guess state your argument <laughs> as to why <laughs> the bank the bank bank. because this team this team is is not doing very well at all. Like, yeah. um, Nation is. Optic Nation is in a, a seven losing streak, and it doesn't. There's not a light at the end of the tunnel. They're probably not going to make it to. It's almost like Optic Nation as a team just shouldn't exist. Like they've not been able to find a successful roster. I was roster just about to say that. I kind Brandon of feel as first. if that is exactly what they should do. I feel like they should just drop the Optic Nation roster. Um, I probably made a bit too much of an emphasis on Embos. I don't think just subbing out Embos for another player will fix the problems. I think their general problem is the fact that they can't slay as much as other teams therefore in respawn they're just non-existent now it's a whole different scenario in s d you know the likes of embos has like a 13 um first five percentage and you plant spawn yeah. like 50 percent of the time so you know that the s d they're known to be good you know as you said in statistics you know when it gets to around 11 they're getting 80% of the time they're winning that round 11 so you know that we know they're good at s d they always have been but i feel like this team is kind of being put together based on how they did back in ghosts. Now, obviously, back in ghosts, they had a couple of good events. They had a couple of bad events. Um, but yeah. obviously, back in ghosts, it was a lot different. In ghosts, with the game types you had, I almost feel like you didn't need to really rely on slaying because the way the mechanics of the game modes work, like domination, you could just camp or play, you know, uh, the sneak cap in Blitz or whatever it be. But it just does mm -hmm. not work in advanced warfare it's it's very evident that in advanced warfare you see slayers as we've talked about before get you know three or four kills on average per map in, in respawn so i just feel like as a team collectively it it's almost like they've got they just don't mesh i just feel like something drastic needs to train change on this roster it may not be just embos going but i feel like something drastically needs to change and quickly because as i talked about in my video they have eight 
uh, league matches this week starting from tonight. And, you know, if they, yeah. you know, don't pick it up, they could find themselves, you know, sitting at maybe like, I don't know, like 10 or 22 or maybe less. Yep. They're going to be the same as last year. It's unfortunate, but they're going to be in the, the same Optic position sandwich. as last season. Yeah. And here's the funny thing. Um, a guy in the chat, and this this is so true. He said, uh, "Sleep, Sleepy Mercy, spelled weird. He said, if Clayster would have stayed and led Owen, then they'd be top four. And I agree with that. I don't I don't think they would have picked up this roster if Clayster was the one leading the team. But I think Clayster would have picked up some different players, and I they'd probably be a great team. Um you, you, I, I think that team hasn't invested in the right players. Maybe I mean they keep I don't know. picking up the same players. It feels like it feels like they're. Yeah. You know, I, I understand that Hex likes Killer because he's a funny dude and he sees the aspect that you know you get him on in front of a YouTube video and you're making big bucks. But like from a competitive aspect, I feel like they need to start expanding and going after different players. Otherwise, Optic Nation is just going to collapse. Yeah. So let me, me ask you guys this question: If Optic Gaming took over. If Optic Gaming and Optic Nation switched records, where would Optic Gaming finish and where would Optic Nation finish in the league? Do you think Optic Gaming would work their way up? Oh, how many? Sure. I mean, well, how many? Why like, wouldn't they? I think like four yeah, weeks. I, it's four weeks of matches left. Yeah, I absolutely think Optic Gaming. They they definitely dig themselves out of the deficit, and we would just see Optic. The new Optic Gaming, I guess, just you know, get closer and closer to the bottom. Envious, Envious would probably beat Optic Nation or beat get above them at some point. I, I, I do feel and you know, see them being consistent. Just because they switch records, I don't think that it's going to make a difference. You know, it's funny. Yeah. I think that um, technically, couldn't Hex switch all four of his players from Optic Gaming to Optic Nation? Straight them, yeah. Isn't that possible? <laughs> Uh, just, yeah. That's just one of the reasons. I've, I've said this a couple times in the past. That's just there's just so many different reasons why I don't think an organization should have two teams in the league. But that's totally irrelevant. I just wanted to say that. <laughs> well, maybe, maybe, maybe he switch it all up. Cell phone from his landline and said, "Hey Hex, hi Hector. Um, I want to give you karma. <laughs> oh really? Well, I'm not going to give you anyone. Okay." Well, I'll that's take karma. Like, it's <laughs> just right. the repeat of OG. OG lost Nade. So yeah. they just took Karma from Owen, and now Owen has nothing. They just got to search for a fourth player. It's like what? Like what if? What if Owen was working out perfectly fine? They didn't want to make roster changes, but Nate left. You know, wow. OG could be a lot better with Karma. Let's just strip Karma off that team. No, those guys are screwed. Let's just that's just hypothetically. What if Owen was a great team? But we Sorry. shouldn't even get into that. Cause that's totally I off just, topic. I just could imagined be. something. Imagine yeah. if Karma and Teep were still on the team. And they managed to get Clay. Oh, I would have died. Ridiculous. And, and they could get a good fourth. Like they could get any fourth. It'd be ridiculous. <laughs> I just got goosebumps. I'm sorry. That would be <laughs> insane. That'd be an insane. Karma was was to I didn't even think about that. Dang. Yeah, it's I think I pick, too. I think Owen could pick it up. They just got to get the attitude straight. Parasite. Grind out the game together. And oh. It'll be fun. <laughs> Landon's having a conniption over there. <laughs> I, I like watch rosters all the time, and I always come up with ideas, and like that's just getting me excited. Like, can we just yeah, out? Like, succeed? I really do. I like all four of the guys on that. I really want to see yeah. them succeed. Oh yeah, of course. Uh, and and I I want them to entertain me, and I know that if they don't win, they're not going <laughs> to entertain. Me, so it really there's a problem here. You guys got to start winning. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Landon, slide us over to UGC Niagara. Oh okay. Hold on. Let me go. Let me go down. So. This weekend coming up is UGC Niagara. First thing what? that I I put as a question is who's going? Nobody knows. <laughs> like no one knows until they actually get on that plane. Yeah, there's like a bunch of pickup teams. Like I heard Nate Shot's coming back to this event that he's not. I don't know. We know the Envy's coming with uh, with Merc instead of Saints because Saints can't travel out the yeah. country. Um, TK, I think their full roster is going. Um, first thing. Honest, and this is whenever me and Kingdom were talking about the show, uh, we were just thinking of this. Do you guys think that the viewer count due to like not necessarily every team being there? Or we don't even know if Opti Gaming is going to say uh, the least. Do you guys – well, there will be a viewer. Why don't you, you know, tell them your prediction and see if they agree with it? Tell them your prediction that you said. I think – I don't know if this is you true. What you said. Just say it. You already said it. Bro, you built it up. I, I want to <laughs> hope, hope that we at least get 50K. <laughs> Posure. At least 50k. Yeah. yeah, we'll hit that. 
I yes, want to hear Goalie's opinion done. on that. Goalie, do you think they're going to hit 50K? Wait, what's that? 150 k yeah, Wow. 150K or 50? I just said 50K. 50K. <laughs> I, I would hope so, but the fact that we only know two teams for sure and that the event <laughs> isn't being promoted uh, very At well, all. I doubt it. Jeez. I highly doubt it. It's basically... Um, it's kind of like AEL Dallas, like last year. Like, it just wasn't... Pro it's not being promoted at all. And, uh, like last year at AEL Dallas, we had TK, Curse, and FaZe attended. Those were the only pro teams. Um, but I don't think it will hit over 50k. But that's just... <laughs> that's not because Optic's attending. Even if Optic was attending, I don't... I honestly don't think it would make it. But it's just because it's not being promoted well. Oh yeah, yeah if I Optic mean, was attending, I wouldn't even argue 50k. I would, I well, mean, no, I, I, I will like no, I would say that it might not even like it should, but uh, yeah. like if like let's say the players didn't tweet out the stream or they didn't make a video, like heck, it wouldn't make it. Yeah, I mean, and that's what Optic is good about is saying making a vlog. We're going to UGC Niagara, and then when they're there, they tweet out you know like we're about to play uh, Prof or yeah, we're about to play TK yeah. on the main <laughs> stage, you know, and so. But if there's no, it wouldn't be good. It's not going to be. Event, yeah. It wouldn't be good viewership though. Like even like even if yeah. that was the case, it wouldn't be good viewership. It's yeah, see, that's why I'm I'm loving working with everybody there and stuff, and they've been great to me, and I look forward to working with them this weekend. It's probably all going to be a, a very well run event. I just that's yeah, one yeah, great that I have is like I just haven't seen any. I haven't even seen any Twitter activity from the UGC Niagara account. Like, like honestly, that's what I didn't even me. know it was this week. I thought it was next week. I was like, <laughs> wait. Yeah, yeah, I'm yeah, I'm going to jump in again. I thought ESWC was this weekend cuz I knew that they were both in the same time zone. Like, come on, ES... come on. Goalie, keep up. Come on. It's next week. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, like, uh, come like, on, come on, yeah. goalie. Homie, there's an event every week for the next 5 weeks. Give me a break. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Oh. Can you put those on Can you put those on on uh, on the screen? Go ahead, Fox. Oh, I'll work on it. Oh, no, I was going to say I'd like to see a promotional video about Niagara or just some tweets or something hyping it up. Like, hey, look at the picture of the venue stuff. You know, that's something I'd like to see to market it a little bit. But we're not really seeing any sort of advertisement. And the event is in three days. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to well, pull that... the schedule up on yeah. screen. And now, do you think, do you got, why is it because it's in Canada and it's harder to get there? Or is it just because it's only $10,000? Like, how come no one is going? Like, I think it's because the location, it's it's kind of far away. You know, it's up there, it's, you know. <laughs> um, and plus the prize pool, the prize pool is a lot smaller. You know, it's it's ten. Well, you know, ten thousand dollars is is amazing. Like, don't get me wrong, um, but the fact of where it is, players are you know kind of getting tired of this game. To be honest with you, I think they kind of are. And along with the prize pool, I think people are just like, you know what, let it go. It's only ten thousand dollars, which is an insane amount of money. And don't get me wrong, but. Uh, I think it, honestly, just all of that stuff in together really just makes a lot of teams just not motivated to go. I, I'm excited. I saw the list that goalie put on the screen, and I'm so happy that I'm going to be at one of those events. I, that that just hey, makes me happy. Kingdom at Land, finally. Yes. So who's <laughs> the predict? Let me let, let's ask this. It's twenty thousand so, dollars and ten thousand. It's ten thousand pro points. Just to clarify, it's twenty thousand okay. dollars, but ten thousand pro points. First Unless place gets yeah. ten thousand. First yeah. place gets ten thousand dollars. Yeah, that's what I mean. Yeah, like right. Oh, okay. First place gets ten thousand. Yeah. Um, and so, if let me ask you guys this: so we we do know that right now what we've heard is that TK is going with their full squad, and Envy is going with Merc instead of Saints because he you know still has his travel issues. Uh, between those two teams, who do you think is going to win this event? I'll start with Fox. Between I'm sorry, who was it? Envy and who? TK and Envious with Merc instead of Saints. So their number one Slayer is not going, and they're replacing him with Merc, who's their substitute for the league. Mm -hmm. Who would... That is tough. I'm going to predict TK. I think if when they get their stuff together, they're going to be a really strong team. But, yeah, and especially with Envious losing Saints, that's, I think it's a pretty big deal. I feel like he's a very in integral part to, uh, to Envious. Yes, yeah, their success, yeah. Landon? Um, to me, it's going to depend, which we can't know, obviously. It's going to depend on how TK starts off the event. Um, I think they're very, now at least, they're a very momentum-based team. And mm -hmm. for them, and this is just my opinion, of course. I think it could be, there could be a lot of different instances that come into play. But um, I think, honestly, with their completely new roster, they're completely, like you said, 360 
different motion now into yeah. their new event. I think it's going to be a little bit shaky for them. If they can start off hot, I definitely think that they can win the event uh, regarding you know what teams are, are there. But I'm going to say Envy. I think the Envy is a really good team. They've been playing really well <clears throat> in the league, which online and lane yeah. are obviously different. But uh, I think that team is really strong. They have really good chemistry. It's just going to come down to me how well that TK can start off. And if they can start off, I definitely pick them just because of their roster. Um, very slaying heavy now. They're a really good team. But like I said, I think it's going to come down to how TK starts off. And if they don't start off well, then I definitely see Envy uh, beating them. That's just you know, that's just me, though. So I think um, – well, go ahead, Tommy. Do you have a prediction between Envy and TK for this land this uh, weekend? I think TK would take it. Um, I could honestly see – uh, I don't. Well, I don't want to say it because I don't really believe that there's any roles in advanced warfare. But I can honestly see TP and Merc butting heads. Um, I feel like TK, the players individually on that lineup, are all pretty consistent on land. The Gunja, I think, is still the factor. Um, I think if he turns up, they do well. Um, mm-hmm. So that's why I'd probably give it to TK. Okay, I'd give it to TK too. Um... I think everything that, that Parasite is doing for that team, and they're going with their full squad. So Saints, as their top slayer who runs around and slays everything with his his, his ASM1 and gets 40 bombs like it's easy, and is basically, if you watch the kill feed, he's always getting two kills in a row. And so when, you, when you're missing that person that's getting those two pieces and sometimes three pieces, and you can't replace Saints with Merc. Merc's a good player, but you can't mm-hmm. replace Saints with Merc. That's just not an equal replacement. And I'm, so, go ahead, Landon. What? No, I, no, I didn't mean to interrupt. I, I was just curious. I don't know if Merc is going to be playing the OBJ role or not because he's been talking about a lot how he's not been playing it for Justice, that he's been playing no, he probably, AR. He probably I'm just curious way, if he, I'm just saying yeah, no, slate-wise. Uh, slate oh, no, I absolutely agree. Yeah, kills per respawn. There's, there's not a comparison between Merc and Saints. I mean, you're you're, you're not oh, replacing kills. And so if you think about the core of this game, the outslaying team wins over 80, I think it's 82% of the time. And so, and that's online. On LAN, it's still over 80%. But, and so if you if you think about the core of the game, take away, strip away rolls, like Tommy was saying, strip away everything. How many kills are you getting per game? Optic Gaming gets over, I think, 12 kills more than their opponents in respawns. And so that has a difference. And... If you take away twelve of those kills by replacing a player, you know you put them in a at a deficit, I guess. And so I think Envy is not going to be the same team that they are. TK is going to be the exact same team, and TK is struggling as well. If you look in the league, Envy's doing great. TK is struggling, but one of the things that's helping Envy get on this eleven game match winning streak is, and I think the they lost to Optic, and then they went on this streak. Have they played Optic yeah. since the streak started? No, they haven't. Okay. So their streak will end at that point, probably. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, they um, lost their first. Yeah, if they win the Warriors, yeah, and actually, I think Goldie yeah. told me this. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, they lost their first, and this is as roster changes. So they've gone eleven uh, on this eleven streak that they've gone on. It's just been with roster changes. I don't want anyone to think that that was from their previous record continuing over. So oh, we know they're, they're eleven and one winning streak with their previous. Yeah, well, they're roster. yeah. yeah. And so they're eleven and one because they lost to Optic and then just went win 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 yeah. win win and they beat everybody else that they've played and so um, I, I'm gonna have to go with TK as well I just think I mean TK is that team you know they're they're going to continue to do well um, and they've done well so I want to issue you guys to pull up the, we're only gonna answer one question from Twitter and Goalie you don't even have to put it on the screen I wish um, but I will it's the top eight. It's okay. from Big Big yeah. Shots, yeah, I got it. X, I got it. XGN. Um, so XGN, oh, big, shots. Um, big Shots says, uh, who places top eight in the league for X Games? So what I did is I gave you guys the link for Co- – I know you could find it on Codpedia, but I gave you the link for Codpedia. If you just scroll down a little bit, you'll see uh, the eight teams and where they are right now and what their records are. And that's kind of interesting that all of the bottom five teams are on losing streaks. I mean, AR has only lost one, but it's interesting that the winning teams are winning and the losing teams are losing. It's kind of interesting. AR also just look, got look at Team Denial. Caliber though. Team Team Caliber oh. on a losing four streak. Yep. TK is on on. They're on a struggle since they got the. They're they're they. Yeah. They they're not, they're not very happy right now. I'll say that much. So, um, if you had to pick, and I'm gonna go, 
Fox. Well, no, no. Let me go Landon, Tommy, Fox, and then myself. I want you to pick who's going to be left over for top eight. Now, your top four or five should be pretty easy, but when you start getting down to the six, seven, and eight, that's where you might mix it up. Um, and so I'll start with Landon. We'll go Tommy, then Fox, then myself. Um, <clears throat> so this is just who our, who our top eight will be at the end of the season. Is that right? Who do you think is going to go to X Games? Right. Yeah. Um. So obviously Optic. I think Elevate will go. Uh, sorry, I'm just like reading down to this. Uh, Denial yeah, yeah, and yeah. Phase. MV will make it, obviously. Uh, TK, to me, will, will be like up and down. I think they'll be in the sixth or seventh spot, to be honest. Um, I think we'll actually see Justice, maybe. I think it's going to be between Automatic Reload and Justice and maybe Prof. I, it's hard. I, I think we'll see... I'm trying to think here. Who's on Prophecy right now? I should know that. That's X, Apathy... Moach and or no, Ace, Ace Apathy Sensor and who's the fourth Moach? Yeah, I was right. Cool. And they're on I'm a five game losing streak. Yeah. I'm gonna say AR over Prof. Uh, I like Prof, and I looking at the players on that team, it's kind of like shocking that I'm gonna say that. But uh, you know, tenth, ninth, and eighth, I'll have the exact same record. So it's definitely gonna be a fight between those two or those three teams. I think it's gonna come down to who beats Rise and or between Rise and AR. I think AR is a lot. It's personally a lot better team now, uh, especially with the addition of Happy and the, you know the players that they've got. So I'm going to say um, all those teams with uh, AR instead of Prof. Okay, Tommy. Interesting. Um, I'm going to work backwards. The, I'm just going to say the teams that I don't think will qualify because then from that okay. you can pretty much tell me yeah. uh, tell the teams that will. Uh, Opti Nation don't qualify. Pretty dead set. I feel. I want to say TCM qualify, but I don't think they do. Um, being re- uh, realistic um rise nation another team i don't think will qualify i think ar will qualify although i i think ar will better with bl fire in my personal opinion um i don't i don't think spacely it is what it is but uh, i think ar will qualify um and the team that won't qualify will probably i'm probably gonna say justice so be uh, ON, TCM, Rise, and Justice, I don't think, qualify. Okay. Fox? I'm going to work my way down from the top of the list on who I do think will qualify. I'm going to take a lot of the uh, a lot of the ones that are currently there. I'm going to go mm-hmm. with OG, Elevate, Denial, Phase, uh, Envy, TK, Rise, and... Um, if Optic Nation gets their st- stuff together attitude-wise, I definitely see them rounding it out at the bottom. Of the top eight? Yes, at the, at the top Whoa. eight, at the bottom of the top eight. If they think, get their think, stuff together. I think they'll make a change, to be honest with you. I really do. Yeah. A roster change? Yeah. They only have anything. eight days. Yeah. I do. I still do. What? They'll make it... In the middle of the season, in my opinion. No, like, I'm in the middle of have, this week. They have eight days, yeah, to make a roster change. Right. That well, I know Tommy said they have like eight league week. matches. They have to. Honestly, like, no offense. Like, I'm not saying that Hex is dumb if he doesn't, because Hex knows what he's doing, obviously. But if if he sees at least any life in this team, he definitely needs to get rid of someone or find someone fast. And I think if they don't, then. They're just going to have the same thing that they did last year, celebrating every time they win a league match. Like, uh, you know, what, what was it, Karma, like, bringing out the dual XMGs, like, spraying randomly over the map when they won and stuff. So, yeah, they they have to or they're going to get last. Like, that's easy as that. And I think they have to, to be honest. And I, and I think if they find a good role. Sense. These are some of the most talented players. And oh, it's, yeah. it's really unfortunate that they're – going to be dead None last. of them are just I think solid this, is where, this goes back to what you were talking about earlier. I mean, I think a coach would probably be ideal for them just to fix the attitudes and maybe discuss Definitely. a little bit better strategy and stuff because they seem to disagree on a lot and then when they disagree, they get down on them like, not down on themselves and like just emotionally, but like they just don't want to work together. I could be a good coach. I just don't want to travel. <laughs> Kingdom, coach. Coach. You're close. Kingdom coach. Kingdom coach. Let me DM Hex real quick. <laughs> Um, optics, op- optic Kingdom sounds really good. <laughs> um, so if I had to pick, um, this is hard because if you notice, once you get to Cap TK, we're talking about one a two win difference between TK and Optic Nation. 
from you know from sixth to twelfth. And this is what happened last year, and it's it's just the cod gods. This is what they do to us is that you know it comes down to the wire, and it's like you know we got to the last week, I and mean, we always we get to the last week, and there's still teams that can make it, and it's not like there's this clear. But these top five teams, they're just clearly a league above everybody else right now. Um, their their win difference is they're six wins above, and and Envy's on it. I mean, everybody with the exception of Denial is, and you can't really call losing one a streak. You know, like that's not really a, a lost streak. So basically, everybody who's winning, they're all winning. They all have five or more wins, with the exception of Denial, who probably just ended a winning streak to get their one loss. And so, I think I would have to say TCM for sure, in my opinion, not going to make it. Rise is not going to make it. How do you um, feel about that, Tommy? No. <laughs> what, bro? But Chino and Wheats are going to pick that team up and hoist them away to success. Well, I'm telling you. Here's the deal. You know, Fox, you could be right because Chino, if you noticed, um, was one of the top slayers and he had one of the top kills per respawn. And he has the record right now for the most kills. Uh, well, no, no. He's right behind Ake. So he, has, he got 53 kills on, I don't remember what team he was playing. I think it was just i don't remember what team doesn't matter i was definitely um, casting this match and i couldn't tell you because i remember it was on retreat <laughs> yep. and, but what were you he, doing if you were casting it and you don't remember it <laughs> i mean it was blaze it man 420 um, just kidding i'm totally joking <laughs> so say, tcm is out justice is out um optic Gosh, Optic Nation, I really... If they make a roster change, this could change, but Optic Nation, and lastly, to round out the bottom, would be between AR and Prof. Um, oh, and Rise. Uh, so I got TCM, Optic Nation, Justice, and... Who else is on Prophecy? That's Aix, Sensor, Moach, Burns. I mean, Aix, Sensor, Moach, Apathy. Just the I'm gonna go with that squad. They're gonna end up making the. When you say that there's gonna be a roster change on Optic Nation, you may see uh, Apathy end up in wearing Optic green. Apathy in place uh, of who? I think he needed one of those players Killer. on Optic Nation. I don't uh, see getting rid of Bose. The thing is, and it's if Killer goes, Mir goes, and vice versa. <laughs> I don't see them getting rid of Ricky either for Apathy. Ricky's so too good. Like, I wouldn't get that's rid of. That's what I'm saying. So like, who would you? Honestly, I money. think if if Killa's gone, I don't think the Miracles would leave right now, honestly. He's got a good spot yeah. in the league. He's on a really good Maybe team. Full. Yeah, well, yeah. I think, honestly, he wouldn't leave Apathy in this position right now. I, I would 100% would be on with that. <laughs> Keep in mind, Roster Mania is not over, boys and girls. It's not over. <laughs> it's not over. <laughs> Continue. Just just the as, as he points to his Twitter handle. As he points to his Twitter handle. Roster Mania is not over. Go follow me. Roster Mania at Rondez Fox is always <laughs> happening. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I got to play basketball tonight. Um, oh. So we, we're going to end the show. Uh, thank you guys for coming out. It's been a very long one, almost two hours. This has been bananas. Really? Um, uh -huh. Yes, it's been really long. So I'm going to give you guys an <laughs> opportunity. Goes, mm -hmm. <laughs> hey, it's not as long as league matches, goalie. Get off our backs. Ooh. And Ooh. you don't have to and you don't have to tweet out stats like, oh, Landon just predicted that <laughs> Nation would make a roster change. You should you don't have to tweet that stuff Some out. Good marketing for the show yeah, it's from, the, out. from the Sticks Live Twitter. I, I need yeah. I need three more monitors and I'll do that. Duffman <laughs> Oh, come on. Duffman Bro, just said like, what? Goalie just goalie just has a C plus attitude right now, to be honest with you. <laughs> oh. I just realized that my mic's been on for like the last 15 minutes too. I forgot to turn it off. Oh well. Yeah, you've been farting up with storm. Like, wake up, it's snoring, bro. <laughs> just little yeah. sounds. All right. Uh, so before what what announcement? I said there was an announcement. Did I say there was an announcement? All right. Now something so, random. Uh, something random. Yeah. Um. I had a I took a video of well I'll say it in my outro but I will announce something random in my video uh, or in my outro so uh, I'm gonna go Tommy Fox Landon and then Kingdom Soldier and you can say whatever you want to whoever you want thirty seconds or less okay so um, 
thanks for having me. I'm not normally on the NA show. Um, I'm normally on the EU show. If you want to watch that, uh, I don't think we're on this week, but we'll be on uh, next week, uh, Wednesday, 5.30 British Standard. But for the majority of you, that'll be like 12.30 Eastern Central. Um, thanks for having me. I've been Tommy. Um, all my links are down below if you want to check me out. All right. Uh, hey, guys. You guys hopefully know me by now. I've been on the show a couple times on Fox. I'm a live streamer, YouTuber. Thank you, Kingdom, for having me on. Thank you for having me on the show, everybody. Love it here. Uh, Twitter is right here. I uploaded a pretty cool video today. If you guys want to check it out, I try to upload every day. And I just recently got partnered with MLG, so I have a sub button now. It's, hey. my, it's a great experience. I, I won that on Twitch. Now, didn't get it, but MLG it was nice. Did you, you get, do that for me. did you get eight subs yesterday? Is that what you said? I have eight subs total. I've been streaming That's for awesome. three Three days since I since I first got my sub button, That's awesome. and I have Fox fam. Fam. the Fox fam. Oh. The Fox bro. fam. I'm hoping that uh, hoping it picks up, and you know, obviously that stuff so that stuff continues. It's a great experience, Eight. and I have some amazing people supporting me. Eight subs in three days is pretty dope. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. All right, uh, Lando Cal Rizzio. Actually, I saw him. I was watching the Star Wars celebration thing, and he was actually oh, on. Oh guy was the other day i was like oh that's me not really i'm not black anyway <laughs> thank you so much for watching the show wait Junior what your bro your pal <laughs> and your ally on the internet it's been Lana. thank you guys so much for watching the show um i just lost what i was gonna say uh i make youtube Mars videos i play guitar solo occasionally <laughs> uh, you i do Sorry, Landon. We're just totally stepping but, all over here. No, you're I, fine. I, 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 yeah, I like yeah, if if Fox could put the guitar as the outro in it, I would totally be happy with that. No, dude, because then I gotta tune it, and I gotta find my, I gotta get my tuner from under my. No, nah, man. Not Let's right make now. it a three-hour Next... show. There's hey, there's a guy. On... <laughs> I mean, no, it'll take me like, Bro, it's oh, like 20 half, seconds to tune it's it. It's half one here. I need to go to bed. Half one. Oh, <laughs> one thirty. There's, there's a guy. On, uh, there's a guy on Twitch <laughs> who plays the piano for hours, and people just watch him play the piano. Ten thousand people. Yeah, I mean, yeah. once I, I I plan on I plan on doing that. I plan on like in between games, I want to start playing guitar. I haven't played guitar since like the year after I graduated high school. I haven't been playing very consistently because I've been working on school and all this stuff. So, I've been pretty busy. I still remember how. I can st I still know all my songs and stuff. Oh, that, I learned, goalie? But... that goalie, goalie, are you alive? Did you just faint? Just passed out. <laughs> goalie. <laughs> goalie, dude, you gotta end the show. We're gonna be stuck here forever. <laughs> I don't need I don't need luck at basketball, OG Bank. I don't need luck. Yo. I have skill. <laughs> Kingdom, I gotta say something to you. First off, when we, if we go both get to Niagara, we're playing basketball. I will buy a basketball in Canada to play against you, and we will find a court. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Secondly, you still owe me a one v one, bro. What's happening? I, I should make a twenty one game. I will be time. in. The oh wait, don't I land in a one v one too? Let's make it a let's make it a horse game or something. Not a horse. What am I saying? Like a twenty one. Don't game. I owe you a one v one? Did that ever happen? In what? And Didn't you that. challenge me to the one v one in Call of Duty? No, you challenged me. <laughs> you challenged yeah, but... me. Oh my oh. god! Okay, oh, no. I said I this, this, is, this is what happened. Right. Let me. I know what happened. Okay, so he's like in the show. I want to go to bed. <laughs> no. oh, this is this Are is you what happened. You're talking basketball. I'm here. Like, can I go to bed? Like, can I no. just leave? Wait, your man's right behind you. Are you, you not entertained? This is hand orange. Okay, okay, Tommy, Tommy, just pull a hitch. And just uh, push away your chair, <laughs> start laying down on bed, keep your headset on, okay? Tommy, can we please get some cooperation out of you, please? <laughs> he just went down, he was like... <laughs> like... No, but let me tell you what happened. Okay, Kingdom. We were in Goalie's chat, we were in Goalie's stream, twitch.tv slash Goalie with two E's, TV. Anyway, we were in Goalie's chat, someone said in the chat, I think, uh, it was like debating, is Kingdom better than Landon? I was like, I think I'm better than Kingdom. And then uh, you were like... So, you want to 1v1 me, huh? And I was like, no, that's not what I said. And then you said, how about you 1v1 me on the sticks? Never got around to it. We're going to ask Fox to cast it, and we never did. Thank you very much. Good night. You I would cast it, though. I would, I would cast it. If Kingdom won't play right. me to 1v1, I'll cast it. Let's do it live on the street. You'll live annihilate me, Fox. You'll, you'll <laughs> make me look like a little child. <laughs> Oh gosh! I I I, I will I happily host this match. You can have my bad EU connection. <laughs> <laughs> Just to make it fair. Oh wait, wait, it's my turn. It's my turn. It's my turn. So I took a video of my. Oh my gosh! What is this? Holy <laughs> sweet out. <laughs> That's oh, my awesome. <laughs> oh, my timeline. 
<laughs> oh man, that's awesome. Me and Fox yeah, knocked it's... out. <laughs> like... <laughs> Wait, hey guys, guess what? This is an Oreo cookie. The oh picture my... that goalie tweeted out. <laughs> oh. <laughs> that's a my bit old, but stop. Stop. Double stop. <laughs> Great all over, dude. No. <laughs> you just called it a double stop story. All right. So it's my turn. All right. So I uh, I made a video, and I was taking a video of my wife, and I was going to put it on um... – Okay, EU show is off. Okay, so I, I I made a video and I was gonna put it on my channel. Except my wife said like a bad word in it. It's not like a really bad cuss word, but it's a word that I can't say on my channel. And it really sucks because she was standing there talking and then she realized that I was videoing her and she just said it on purpose so I couldn't use it. And then she just started saying other words and I just had to cut it off. So it was, it was really sad. Uh, Kingdom wifey will show up um, on my channel and she definitely. Uh, has agreed not only to go to UMG Cali, but she's agreed to do Ooh. like vlogs with me. So I'm gonna get a GoPro and Ooh, then um, basketball. That won't happen. <laughs> we'll see. <It's, laughs> do you know what happens to a man when he's playing in front of his wife? Like it's just like magic oh, yeah. power. To me. I don't have that advantage. Nostro just running through Kingdom's body. It's gonna be unfortunate. <laughs> um, but no, it'd be cool works. if we can play with like it. I do want to play with Hector. I know I'm sure pretty sure he'll be there. So. Oh, um, he great. says he'll beat me if we played a seven, but if we play to eleven, I'll win. So I'm like, because he's has he's short winded. So anyway, make sure you guys use the code Sticks for five percent off your Scuff Gaming products, and use code Kingdom for ten percent off of your G Fuel. If you guys haven't tried the new Blood Orange, I like it. Um, I don't know what everybody else thinks of it, but I actually like it. I like the Blood Orange flavor. Uh, definitely worth checking out, in my opinion. And you can get ten percent off. You can like not pay tax uh, just by using my code. Kingdom, um, I will be uploading a video. I know I used a cliffhanger yesterday. For those of you that saw the video, um, I left a really bad cliffhanger where I started talking and then I just ended the video. Uh, and I will be putting up a video where I uh, talk about that. O OMG Bank or whatever your name is, I used to be able to dunk OG Bank. Um, I can still get oh. up there, but mm. I haven't dunked in over a year. So uh, I play in the gym I'm six two. once a week. 6'2". <laughs> I'm 34. <laughs> Old man, oh, we like we know we we foul with the best of them. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm white. Ahead, so. I'm white. <laughs> yeah, we're we're in the middle of this already. Can we not can we not have a part of this somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm gonna um, yeah, we'll, we'll we're we're gonna end the show on this awkward note, <laughs> and we'll see you guys uh, on. Either the 1v1 on Thursday or on the weekly recap on Friday. Make sure you guys tune into the weekly recap. The last year's last year, last week's <laughs> show was really good um, with Crush and Goalie and Landon. Um, I'm looking forward to them doing that again because uh, they just have fun conversation and you can chime in and, uh, and keep really up fun. and catch up. Thank you, Fox, for coming on the show again. Um, I know I asked you at the last minute and you weren't sleeping like Fizzerp, so I really appreciate it. <laughs> um, oh. Thank I you. I changed my uh, schedule specifically for the show. Thank you. <laughs> oh, thank you, Tommy, for coming on. Um, welcome. Let's make this happen. This one v one between me and Landon with Fox casting has I'm to. I'm me host. I'm me host. And Just Tommy host. hosting. So we're gonna be <laughs> Wait, skipping around the map. What day? Head on over to the game. <laughs> what day? We should one v one on Black Ops Two, but we Ooh, can't. Yes. You don't have an Xbox Three Sixty. I do. Wait, what Xbox day were you talking about this one? Yeah, but you don't have Black Ops Two on that. I don't know, yeah. Fox. We'll we'll figure it out. You're because yeah. you're not going. To, when are you leaving for Niagara? Thursday at twelve fifty. So we either have to do it before then or when you get back. Yeah. We could pre-record it. Like no, I want to do it Math, live. Matthew it said. Live. Yeah, do it live. Live. No, skating. Landon, Landon, you have a lot of followers. I don't want to hurt your feelings. Like in oh! front of your twenty-five thousand. What are you at right now? In followers. <laughs> right, bro. When when do I get Just the juice? 22. Is the next question. No, <laughs> he's, got, he's got the mod. He's got the mod, but and now he wants the juice. I'm kidding. Right? <laughs> it's really okay. Leaps and bounds. Juice is real. Um, okay. All right, guys. Uh, we will catch you guys next week. It is a great stream full of banter. Thank you guys for stopping by. That are still in the chat. We appreciate you guys. No, we're not racist. Uh, have a good day. See you guys. Just a little sponsor. Bye. 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 Bye.